Greetings, humans. You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hey everybody, hope you all had an amazing Thanksgiving. Welcome back to another episode of The Command Zone. I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. How's it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. And today we've got a special guest. Wedge, introduce yourself. Hey, what's up? My name is Wedge. I run the Manasaurus. Hi. Yeah, the Manasaurus is wonderful for the, uh, those of you that don't know. It's a YouTube channel that does all kinds of videos uh, talking about, I mean, openings and unboxings, but also just reviews of products. And more recently, you guys did. He does a really lot great. of top ten lists. Yeah. He does. I mean, it's a really cool channel. If you haven't, if you haven't checked it out on YouTube, you should go check it out. Uh, yeah. I mean, Wedge, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the Mana Source? Yeah. I mean, how did you get started with it? Like, what's the goal of it? Do you guys have like a oh, mission gosh. statement? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's on his wall, man. Come on. <laughs> a mission statement for our YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> I guess what happened is. Uh, Back in college, about halfway through, I got back into magic because I was on hiatus for a while. And the group that I got back into it with, we were just we just loved magic so much. And but like at the time we were too busy. And as we started graduating, YouTube was starting to like become more and more of a thing. And right. uh, we just decided that or we thought it would be cool to do a high quality magic YouTube channel because mm-hmm. there weren't that many and it wasn't that big on YouTube yet. Yep. Uh, still not so that we big. Just, I mean, still not, well, I will say yeah, this: you I'm, guys have one of the highest quality shows by like by far for Magic. So thank I think you. you guys probably have the highest quality yeah, show it's that up I've there, seen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, besides the stuff actually put out by Wizards for the Pro Tour and stuff, <laughs> right? Which is not Man. YouTube created content. I, yeah, I would die for that audio. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you can use that sound clip anytime you want. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, but when you started it up, wh- uh, what exactly was the goal of the channel? Was it like a certain kind of videos, or, or, or how did that come about? Uh, I guess the main idea was that we would be sort of like a new show, almost, sort of presenting information rather mm-hmm. than having a discussion. Mm-hmm. So that's why we have, you know, tournament reviews. You know, we tell you what did well and, you know, how those decks were different from previous iterations of those same strategies. And mm-hmm. we would do deck techs and... Uh, you know, talk about what's good on Magic Online right now, basically present information. Mm-hmm. And the community was so interactive that it kind of surprised us. So we started doing more personal things. Like we do altered art spotlights for artists. Oh, nice. And, I didn't even know um, that. It's honestly probably my favorite series. The Magic Altered Art community is disturbingly talented. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's some crazy stuff. Yeah, I've seen some of those videos on your channel where you're just like, well, people have a lot of t- talent. Like, there's just a lot of talent out there in the world. Seriously, yeah. I just say that. I'm yeah. like, you guys make like they make me feel bad because they're so much better at what they do. It's just amazing. But yeah, we we do videos like that. We do lore videos for Magic, and just mm-hmm. it got to a point where it is now a discussion, even with videos we present. So we oh, present nice. a deck tech, and then you know there's hundreds of comments about why that deck is great or awful, or why Siege Rhino is the best creature ever. Mm-hmm. Ever, you know. by the way. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Well, that's great. I'm really glad that there's a place on YouTube to s- sort of discuss, you know, what's going on with Magic and Standard and Constructed because there's not, I mean, there are forums and stuff, but I like I like a comment section. I like videos that break stuff down that can show a picture of a card when you're talking about it and give people like a much more easy way to digest information without having to scroll through a bunch of text. I think that's a big thing like that's different about their channel is like I get to see the cards while they're talking about it. Like there's a lot of podcasts that talk about sort of the recent events in like some GP in Stockholm or whatever, but it's it's hard to follow. It's just like a complicated game and I'm hardcore. Like I know every card in the set, but still you you sort of are like, wait a minute, what card are they talking about? What does it exactly do again? (laughs) Like they're talking about some nuance about it and i'm just like man if i could just see the card while they're talking about it and on the mana source you can totally do that yep i I think that's definitely one of the things that has or that has attributed to our success is it's so you know it's youtube it's video it's visual yeah Yeah. and uh it's very new media for magic you know what i mean like that's very you know not not cutting edge but magic hasn't really gotten into that yet well, in, ter- in terms of what Magic does have, it is cutting edge enough for it, me. Yeah, okay, I know. guess that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people know, we also, like, put, we have videos, uh, they're mm-hmm. actually pretty similar, where we show the card art um, on our episodes, uh, 
you know, while we're talking about it. So it's sort of the I same love idea. That, by the way. Yeah, I, I mean, love that. Yeah. we didn't even know you guys were doing it when we did it, but then I saw their, your stuff and I was like, oh, good. Somebody else thinks this is a good idea. Maybe we're not crazy. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's a great idea because common sense is a thing. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. And people want to see the cards. Like, yeah. The only thing you could do better is actually have the person just have the card magically appear in front of them and they can pick it up. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. I'm That's, working on that. Yeah, oh my gosh. I'll, <laughs> I'll get the magic source in a bit. Uh, I'll get there. Yeah, so make sure you guys check out the channel. It is youtube.com slash, slash the mana source. It's all there. I uh, also want to just call out your latest videos, which were the top 10 worst cards in the history of Magic ever. I think, <laughs> Thank you for adding ever. Yeah, I think there was a couple evers, actually. Ever, ever? Yeah, ever, 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 ever printed ever. ever. <laughs> yeah, ever. It was, that, that was awesome. I really, I've, I've seen quite a few of your videos, and uh, that was probably my favorite so far. So definitely head on over there, peeps, and uh, check out the, at least check out the top, top 10 worst cards. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah. Um, I actually had a card I wanted you to add to your top 10 list, but I guess it'll have to be number 11. Uh, you want to hear it, Wedge? Oh, I'm, I'm so ready. <laughs> I mean, I think your top 10 was great. So, you know, th this this might be in the mix, but I, I, immediately when you were talking about um, the top 10 worst cards, I just thought of Fallen Empires, which is like the worst set ever. And uh, <laughs> there was this one card I just remember. It's called Delif's Cone. It's a zero casting cost artifact. Ooh, count yeah. me in. It's free. Uh, it says, it says, tap it and sacrifice Delif's Cone. This turn, when target creature you control attacks and isn't blocked, you may gain life equal to its power. If you do, it assigns no combat damage this turn. <laughs> so let's just go over this really quick. First of all, you have to sacrifice the artifact. Yeah. The effect only lasts until end of turn. It fogs yourself. <laughs> it, well, it, it's lifelink, but it's conditional lifelink because the creature has to attack and not be blocked. Yeah. And then it actually doesn't even deal its damage to the other player when it hits. It doesn't even like untap the creature either. It, it's it's not even giving it vigilance or anything. It just taps it down. At the time <laughs> this card existed, there was another card called Spirit Link that existed. And it just gave old school lifelink. And I, if you don't know, old school lifelink was a slightly different, but it was whenever the, the creature dealt damage, you gained that much life. So you could actually, yeah. the thing about Spirit Link was you could cast it on your own creature. It didn't cause them to not do their damage to whatever. And also, in a pinch, you could play Spirit Link on their card so that if it hits you, you gain that much life so it evened out. Oh, interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, yeah. No, that, it was a really interesting mechanic. Yeah. It was dangerous. Yeah. Now, Delves Cone, on the other hand, is horrible, horrible, horrible. <laughs> so I just want to nominate it when you do the next top 10 list or, you know, you do the, the honorable mentions or whatever. I just want to nominate that one for, for further I mean, down the road sacrificing just throws it way over the edge. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it wouldn't even be good if you could just tap and do that. But yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least it'd be zero mana, but dang. Yeah, you're always looking for the one thing in the card that's like, okay, that makes it slightly okay, but everything about it outside of the zero mana just makes it worse and worse. Uh, <sighs> truly a terrible card. Um, anyway. So, Wedge, I wanted to ask you about your EDH experience yes. specifically. Um, you know, I know you're a fan of the format. Uh, you know, we've chatted a little over Twitter and such, but, you know, you, you want to tell us a little bit about your background with, uh, with Commander? Oh, yeah. So this is, oh, man, you want to talk about a roller coaster? <laughs> so I got... I got into Commander right after the 2011 products first came out. Uh -huh. Is that with the ones with Kalia and Animar? Yep, yep. Nice. I got uh, Political Puppets with Zedru. Oh, oh nice. boy. And <laughs> nice. I liked it, but something I, I, I at first I didn't like what Commander did to the economy of Magic, right? Right. It, it kind of drove me nuts because you know Woodfall Primus became ten dollars, and personally I considered that ridiculous. But anyway, <laughs> so but then I saw scavenging use and everything was fine. <laughs> uh, so, so before that happened though, I built a Drana Calastria Blood Chief deck. Oh, that was the nice. first thing I ever did. It was a vampire, very simple. And then once I figured out that everyone else was doing cheeky things with like Mimeoplasm um, and Kalia, they were just going absolutely nuts. I built an Angus McKenzie deck. And nice. to this day, that is what I play to make people upset. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Angus McKenzie, by the way, uh, is a card from Legends. Um, its mana cost is Bant, I believe, right? White, yep. blue, green. Yep. And it ha beach. it's a 2 2 legend. And for that much mana, and you can tap him, creatures attack and block as normal, but none deal any damage during combat. All attacking creatures are still tapped. Use this ability anytime before attack damage is dealt. It's so, a fog on a stick. Fog on a stick. And that, that pretty much sums up the rest of my commander experience. 
once I discovered <laughs> Angus McKenzie, my whole life was about making an Angus McKenzie deck that would let me use an enchantment called Divine Intervention. So Divine Intervention is an enchantment also from Legends for six and two white, so eight total. Put two counters on this card. Remove a counter during your upkeep. When you remove the last counter from Divine Intervention, the game is over and considered a draw. Yeah, yeah. Welcome I remember to that card. my whole strategy. Wow, just fog, fog, fog. I love End how it's a game. draw. It's like nobody wins. <laughs> no one feels good. Everyone's upset. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, Commander is about doing fun, cheeky things. I'm assuming that... you have a whole bunch of ways to untap and reuse uh, Angus like over and over. Oh, you uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like this deck. Yeah, I definitely. Angus, oh, it, it ends the game in a way I don't think has ever ended. I think I've never actually drawn in a game in like a tournament or ever. I, I believe Divine Intervention is the only card that specifically says the game ends in a draw, like that's, outright I, as its ability. I, yeah, I definitely can't think of one. Usually those cards say you win. Right, you like, win the game. Like Helix yeah. Pinnacle, which is also in the deck. Right, oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, that's pretty fantastic. Um, so you make lots of friends when you play EDH. That's what you're telling us. <laughs> oh, yeah. People love playing with me. It's <laughs> totally. Is that your only EDH deck? Currently, yes. <laughs> nice. 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 Yeah. You yeah. might. Well, maybe after this, you'll want to make like a, a, a fun one, you know, so that people will like you. <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? That is fun, Josh. Come on, man. <laughs> you know what? I do need more people to like me. Let's let's rebuild Kalia. People love oh, that. Yeah, right. Seriously. <laughs> uh, you know, I found that you can't you can't play the like me game with Commander. Whatever you're making, if it's ridiculous, broken, or just cheese, or just like you know, divine intervention status people are going to find a reason to not like it if they don't like it. So you just got to plow through and have a blast. If someone can play Feldegriff and you not like them, then there's there, there's no winning. There's no winning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a good card, Angus. All right. So the title of this episode is Over Performers. We're going to talk about um, cards that maybe don't they're not in the limelight they're not like format staples they're not the stuff that you always think of for yeah, each color or they're not for the each soul deck. rings yeah for they're not the soul rings or the force of wills or the you know expensive everybody has it in like every red deck needs this or whatever it's not that card mm -hmm. but they're cards where you know they're kind of like almost our pet cards cards that like when you have it in your hand you're you feel you feel good and, and you usually think when you have that card like why doesn't everybody play this card this card's really good well, you don't want them to. It's your secret. Yeah, well, it's not going to be secret for long because we're telling everybody, Jimmy. It's true, it's true. Oh, it, we're going to ruin it. We're going to ruin it. I, I mean, was actually thinking about that while I was making my list. We all we did the thing where we all made our own list, and we're going to talk about the cards. But I was like, do I want to give this away? But you know what? For our listeners, I, I gave I did the cream of the crop. I didn't hold anything back. Nice. I, uh, I, I did cards that I don't even have my own decks. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because I was like, you know, I'm gonna do more research into this, and the further I got, I was like, this is great for this, and I just, I, I found like. How six much or money seven. did you spend right after you uh, did that? Well, they're all like two dollars. Oh or yeah, that's true. Or I was gonna cents. say my average price is like thirty cents. Yeah, yeah. That's, most of that these. was kind of one of the requirements. Uh, I think I have one that's a little over, like around five bucks. But yeah, it's kind of one of the requirements is that it, it's cheap. It can't be too because if it's expensive, yeah. well, you know, it's not. Then you know, it's good. Yeah, it's something people are using. Yeah. So how can that be like a surprising overperformer? Over yeah. A and, Speaking, this of, case, yeah. speaking of overperforming, I did want to. Um, oh, Josh, we're, toot the horns. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah, Josh well, did super well. well, we haven't talked about it a lot, but Jimmy and I have been sort of dabbling in competitive play le recently. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of it's because of the the Masters of Modern podcast, our sister podcast. Uh, Alex and he got uh, us into it. Glenn Jones, uh, who ben was Bateman. was a host, and Ben Bateman is now uh, sort of got us excited about you know playing a little bit of standard. Jimmy and I draft and play uh, limited like a lot. Yeah. Uh, well, Marshall and limited resources is one of the reasons that we even started the podcast. That's true. Yeah, because yeah. we were drafting so much, and um, so we've been playing a ton of cons limited, and we went to a PTQ. Um, I guess it was which is a Pro Tour qualifier. For yeah, those not to know. Won't be PTQs pretty soon here. There'll be pre-TQs and regional PTQs. But anyway, uh, so we went to a PTQ. It was Cons of Tarkir Sealed was the mm -hmm. format. And um, yeah, I made top eight. Yeah, you got to play Obzon good stuff all the way there, right? Yeah, my deck was pretty good. My 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 uh, pool had uh, High Sentinels, which is one of the top three or four cards in the that format. That is a great card. Yeah. For yeah. Wow. It's basically like if they don't kill it, you win. Yep. Um, yep. But it is, there's a lot of things in the format that kill it. it. You know, a lot of times I put it out and it died. And then the rest of my deck was just, yeah, good Abzan stuff. And um, yeah, I, I I mean, I was I was pretty hot. I think I only, 
I think I had like an 85% game win percentage. Yeah, you lost um, only a couple. I think yeah. I only lost. I think I'm, I think I only lost one game through uh, round six. six. Rounds. Yeah, yeah, I remember it. Yeah, that yeah. was it. Was fantastic. You did. That's super amazing well. consistency. Yeah, yeah. The deck was the deck was strong. Um, you made some good plays too. There were some points where Josh's they were going to time in Josh's deck and this other person's deck. They were just had to have been like eight permanents on each side, all with dice on them because they've all yeah. been outlasted or this or that. And Josh <laughs> finally, like down to turn, swings once. And I, honestly, you probably could have done it a few turns earlier as well. But, but I, just, I opened myself up. Yeah, I had yeah. to make sure that like if make if, sure that it if got they have through. a kill shot, then I just lose. I didn't want that to happen. Yep. So yeah, um, there was one game in particular where I mulled down to five, and I was playing against another Abzan deck. In fact, the guy who I was playing against eventually uh, took first place. Um, and but not in that match. No, not in that match. I mulled to five. <laughs> uh, we're both playing Abzan. The first game had gone fairly long, but this game went all the way until he decked himself. <laughs> and I literally <laughs> won that game because I mulled to five. Because I had two more cards in my deck. <sighs> that's, so that's, that's insane. Wow. That's the only time you can really ever say that you won the game, not in spite of mulling, but because you mulled. There you go. Yeah, so anyway, that was pretty fun. Uh, we're probably going to do that some more. Yeah. And I think it actually helps uh, us in terms of playing Commander in a way that is going to be beneficial because it, you don't want to lose, obviously, when you're playing in a tournament. Right. And the, a big aspect of Magic the Gathering is clearly winning or, in your case, Wedge drawing. So you need to know how to get there <laughs> and how Wedge to play. Wedge is like, uh, I disagree with your <laughs> assertion. You know... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, in any case, yeah, I think I think it's uh, it's going to help us bring more quality information to you guys. So we're going to keep competing and we're going to keep uh, the competitive edge. Sharp. And we're on Moto quite a bit these days. Um, you can look me up. I'm Josh underscore C M D Z. So Command Z. Yeah. And uh, Jimmy is Jimmy underscore C M D Z. So yep. if you see us on, you know, shout, shoot us a line, say hi. Maybe we can. Um, we're, I don't play Commander on there. No, uh, no. I, I I only draft online. Yeah, uh, I pretty much only play limited, but. You know, say hi. Yeah. Jump definitely. in a draft with us. That'd be fun. Yeah, for sure. All right. On to the over performers wedge. Do you want to Yo, go first? I would be happy to. Okay. Yeah. Are we oh, going to, by the way, Wo we're not. Wooberg order this? Oh, actually, you can do whatever order you want. I was just going to say, we're not going to do it in a top 10 style or a list countdown. These are all sort of individually over performers for their own reason and in all their own colors as well. So this should be good. I'm anxious to find some hidden gems. Me too. All right, wedge. Yeah, start us no, off. I'm. I'm I'm going to take notes. All right. <laughs> First card is uh, Dawn Charm, which uh -huh. is one colorless, one white instant from Planar Chaos. And it's a choose one. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn or regenerate target creature or counter target spell that targets you. Whoa. From white, a, a counter. Exactly. <laughs> That's why Planar Chaos is full of hidden gems. Man, nobody sees, nobody sees Dawn Charm coming ever. No yeah. one in the world yeah. ever. It is. It, it basically tries so hard to be a Bant Charm right. by preventing <laughs> all damage and countering a spell. It tries so hard. And to do it for one colorless and one white at instant speed, Yeah, it's in Angus McKenzie. It, but it's it's in, in Ang of course it, it is. Prevent be. all damage that would be dealt yeah, this turn. Yeah, that's amazing. Just, or a target so spell that targets you, yeah, it could stop you from some other sort of like non damage based, uh, mm -hmm. you well, know, like burned out. deck you somehow, or yeah, just burn you yeah. out. That's yeah. true. Honestly, the surprise about it countering something is the reason why it's so good. Yeah. Because I, no one, it, it'd be like an encounter by Mana Tithe. Everyone's just like, what? what? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, not I just ready. Got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. In white and Planar Chaos, if you guys don't know, it was a set designed to basically reverse the color pie and just put cards in different colors that it shouldn't be and dawn charm is a great example of that that is a really good card that is uh that's a card where i feel like when you have it in your hand you probably just feel really safe yeah oh yeah feel really good oh, yeah yeah it's going to take something really weird to do any to to at least you know to kill me right now Definitely. yeah no it's it's much better than anyone would think it's much better than the 30 cents it costs yeah do you think it's an auto include in uh, every white deck uh it's. I feel like it's one of those. Maybe meta when you have like ten or like five or ten cards left, mm -hmm. like it's always there. I don't know. It really depends on your strategy because there are a lot of white decks that I know like the toolbox a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I don't know. I don't want to say auto include, but it it rarely lets me down ever. Yeah. Yeah. And the three uses are so good. Um, you know, regenerate target creature is actually way more useful than people think. Like oh, so yeah, often yeah. that will commander. Yeah. That'll you know. save something important. You know, yeah. if they're using spot removal in EDH, 
on something of yours, that something is important. Like yeah. otherwise, they just wouldn't yeah. waste. So yeah, think of how many games too where your commander may die, and that's it. If your yeah. commander is dead, that means next turn you're gonna have to spend six mana to cast it instead of four or whatever, and that is just some uh, some like a time walk you cannot allow. You know, so that's uh, that's quite nice. Um, moving up next, this is actually one of my favorite cards. Oh, I was going to say, you oh, should move on to your list, not his oh, list. Oh, my list. Oh, yeah. we can do one at a time. Yes, <gasps> yes. I like it. All right, moving on to my list. Uh, mind f- blown. <laughs> mind is blown. Uh, the first card is Nurok Stealth Suit, um, and it is a common card from Fifth Dawn. It's a two-drop artifact, and uh, it simply says, Equip creature can't be the target of spells or ability, and equips for one. Now, at first, you're like, hold on. This is, this is Swiftfoot Boots minus the Haste. But it also has this really handy ability, and you need to be in blue to really play this. And it's for two blue, you can attach Nurok Stealth Suit to target creature you control, which means you can swing this around at instant speed on someone else's turn. And one of the, the biggest downsides of Swiftfoot Boots is that you can only give one creature that equipment at any time. So this is great because you can basically save something else if someone targets it as long as you have two mana. Yeah, it's basically a shroud that you can give to a creature at instant speed. Yeah. Yeah, it's they they, they, they could have replaced the text with instant speed counter spell for two blue mana yeah right right it's it, that's the thing it's and well also just the ability to do that will make it so people don't target your stuff yeah. yep because they'll be like mm-hmm. oh well if i do that he's just gonna swing the stealth suit over there so mm-hmm. i'll just well i'll kill somebody else's thing because it you know i want my spell to actually do something yeah definitely it also i think uh an underrated thing is like you can move it off your guy and cast something on him and then move it back to him at instant speed, right? Right, you know, yeah. Because yep. yeah. it's Shroud, it's not Hexproof. Yeah, so it's not Hexproof. You, you have trouble, like, um, like targeting your own stuff generally, but you can do it. You know, you can do some tricky stuff anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I Pretty think cool. the ability It's like a more just, convenient Lightning Greaves. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the ability just to say at everyone, like, look, you can't, don't do not do anything to me. You're just going to lose a spell. That is You're just going to waste a card, yeah. Waste, yeah, don't waste a card on me. Um, okay, mine is one I've talked about many times, but it's Swan Song. This is the this is my force of will replacement or pact of negation replacement because those cards are insanely expensive and this one is like forty cents. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> so it's uh, one blue for an instant. It says counter target enchantment, instant or sorcery spell. Its controller puts a two two blue bird creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So you basically whatever spell they were going to cast that if it's an enchantment, instant or sorcery, it's yeah. countered and then they get a two two flyer as yeah. a consolation prize. It's their swan song. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and what I've found is that in Commander, like nine times out of ten, you don't care if they have a two-two flyer or not. Yeah, yeah. that thing is not going to be ending your game anytime soon. Yeah, and it's, and it's a and one. They might not even spell. swing it at you. So yeah, and yeah. usually yeah. they're yeah. playing some like nine mana costing spell that's going to like give them two extra turns. Exactly. And- like that. That's my point every time. Is that Swan Song is one blue. It's like the definition of value. Right. Because yeah. you're like spending one blue mana to give an opponent a two-two. In, in decks that would play this card, like blue control decks, they'll never care about a 2-2 flyer. Right. Yeah, that's the they're favorite. They're going over so much. It's just... It's yeah. a 20-turn clock. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, ah, uh, like yeah. we're going to go down to 20 anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, we're I've deck. started just putting it, because so cheap, I just bought like 20 of them. Uh, and then just start putting it like on every blue deck, just like yeah. I'll, and also I always leaving want it. leaving one mana up, no one's going to expect that you have a no. counter spell because like yep. what? I mean, like maybe they'll mana leak me or something, but I can just and pay just, the, the extra. The versatility is unreal. Yeah, definitely. Like instant sorcery and enchantments, it's perfect for commander. It's like yeah. they printed it just for that. Yeah, notably it doesn't hit, of course, creatures or planeswalkers, but that's why you also just have yeah, counter spell in your deck if you're yeah. going to be oh, playing. Oh gosh, that would be like. <laughs> But that would be a thirty dollar sh- mythic. Yeah. Generally, <laughs> decks have a lot of ways to deal with creatures because you know most threats are creature based. So you're not as worried about creatures. I'm not saying there's no creatures where you wouldn't wish you could counter it. It's just like you, there's a lot of ways in your deck generally to deal with a creature, and a lot less ways to deal with enchantments, you know, sorceries, instants. So yeah, definitely. All right, Wedge, you're up. All right, um, we'll stick with white because the second white card is just amazing. This is an amazing uh, card. Dead of loyalty. Uh, one colorless, two white from Weatherlight, instant, regenerate target creature, gain control of that creature. Who did they? Uh, oh, man. It's this a is... control magic from white. Yeah. This Don't is my even fi- get me started. <laughs> yeah. Th- this is like, hey, someone board wipes like, hey, that shieldred's out of control. You're like, oh, I'll take it. <laughs> it's just, it's so, it, it just, it does 
everything you want it to do for way less mana than it should cost to do it. Yeah, and you can, of course, do it to your own creature if you really need to. But, I mean, ideally, you're doing this to someone else that, Ideally, you're, like, is. taking their prosh. Oh, my yep. God. And yeah. they're like, oh, well, my deck sucks now. Yeah, it's it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that is a really good card uh, I hadn't really thought about before. But control magic in white. Yeah, for three. And all it requires is a, is a creature to die, which, by the way, that happens in games of command. Yeah, all, all the time. Unless, the time. <laughs> unless you're playing against your deck. <laughs> Nothing dies. Uh, Nothing okay, dies. Hey, hey, we play rap. People still God, board okay? white. Okay, yeah. all right, all right, all right. Well, like, I can imagine the awesome scenario where I convince the player to my right to kill a creature on the player to my left. And then you And take then it? I take it. <laughs> you just take it. I'm like, dude, we cannot have that thing on the board. That's going to uh, kill everybody. You got to do something. I have nothing. Would you got anything? Yeah, I Doomblade it. Okay. That's fantastic. That's oh, what a Zedru says, player would do. Yeah. That's, that's a Zedru thing. Yeah. Uh, does Doomblade say can't be regenerated? Okay, maybe Doomblade's a bad. Well, whatever. I, <laughs> I, I use a destroy creature thing on it. Yeah. All right. My next card is uh, features a keyword I'll talk about later called buyback, um, but it's called Disturbed Burial. It's one in a black. It's a sorcery. And buyback three, which means you may pay an additional three when you play this spell if you do put it into your hand instead of your graveyard as part of the spell's effect. So you essentially buy it back and you can cast it again. And all it says is return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Now, this, again, is specifically for deck types that want creatures to come back to their hand or don't have a good way of recurring them. But the nice thing is for five mana, you could do this infinitely. Yeah, you just keep bringing whatever you want back. Yeah. Yep. And, it, you know, when you're finally like, all right, I'm done using Disturbed Burial, it still just becomes a two mana return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Or just in a pinch, you're just like, I just need to only spend two mana so that I can then cast it, and you yeah, can do exactly. that. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's just, I, I really like value cards like this in black because I play Marchesa, and, and a card like this oh. makes me happy because it means that all those really annoying things that are stealing your creatures and taking stuff from other people's graveyards gets to do it again and again and again. Yeah, I think it's definitely important to recognize that a card like this, if there was no buyback on it, it would be like, all right, this is just another one of those cards. Yeah. But because it has buyback, the value is just skyrocketed on it. Yeah, especially in a, in a game of Commander where you could often have up to, like, I don't know, 12 to 15 mana open on your side to do yeah, stuff it's with. Yeah, not, it's not uncommon to just have tons of mana. And yeah, you're not, I mean, oftentimes you'll find that you'll get great use out of this early if you really need to use it early, you know, and you can get amazing use out of it late if you can still draw it into it late it's still a great card it's yeah. still it has extra abilities on it so buyback's great i think that's one of the definitions of a good card is something that you draw early and it has uses but it's also not dead late mm -hmm. yeah because a lot of things that cost two mana you know like a two mana three three creature <clears throat> in commander is like um we've talked about it before like fleece main lion is just it does so little if you top deck it or draw it on turn 12 that is oftentimes not even worth having in the deck because you know there's way more turn twelves in EDH than there than there yeah. are like er, like there's a lot more late turns than there are what we'd consider early turns in other formats. So yeah, so much yeah. of commander is getting set up to like make your battle cruiser or whatever you're doing. So <laughs> getting set up to like win in one turn. Yeah, you know? exactly. So somebody somebody plays a fleece main line on turn eight and you're just like okay, so what? Yeah, yeah. Imagine, right, well, that's why it's so good because you get to you get to late game and if you don't if your plan doesn't go through. It literally, the rest of the game is about who gets more value faster. Yeah, yep. yeah exactly. And like, that's why buyback is just so ridiculous. Yep. Speaking of value, oh god, this card. Uh, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit salty about this one because just uh. over worlds, uh, they just sort of start talking about this card a lot. Nobody had talked about this card in I don't know years. It came up a lot. <sighs> So it's gonna sound like I copied this, but no, I've been talking about this card for a long time. They stole it from me. Yep, I played yeah. against it before Worlds <laughs> happened, did. so there yeah, you go. Yeah, Patrick Chapin and those guys or whoever. They're on to it. At this point, I just said his name because he's sort of in the lead, but I don't know yet who wins. So <laughs> when you listen to this, you'll know. So maybe it's not Patrick Chapin. But anyway, um, Fate Stitcher is the card. It's three and a blue for a 1-2 zombie wizard. It says, tap. You may tap or untap another target permanence. And it also has Unearth for one blue. And the Unearth mechanic is... Return this card from your graveyard to play. It gains haste. Remove it from the game at end of turn or if it would leave play. Unearth only as a sorcery. So you can sort of bring it back for one turn and one turn only. Yeah, but... This, this thing's disgusting. It is disgusting. Because one, notice how it says target permanent, not non-land permanent. Right. So it can trigger... 
it can make your soul ring pop twice. It'll make your Gilded Lotus go. It can make your uh, Gaia's Cradle go twice. You know, it can just make those. your regular land. So it can just be like, hey, he's just a uh, Voyaging Seder. Yeah, which is pretty good. It's ramp in blue, and it can do it to your opponents prior to combat. It can yep. Dur during their upkeep. You can tap down like one of their yeah. lands that like they only have one blue mana and they've got six white, and you just like, well, I'll tap that one blue mana during your upkeep. And, yeah, you know, turns off like half your deck. Yep, or just tap the creature that they the, that they might attack you with before combat. Um, th this card is just like. Every time I have it in my hand, I'm just like, oh my god, this is awesome. There's like, I can't wait to play this card. I can't wait to play it because <laughs> I can just use it in so many different ways. Yeah, and the nice yeah. thing about Unearth and why it was being mentioned so much uh, because of its use in Modern, where it's so easy to just be like, well, I need one turn to go off with this Jeskai just Ascendancy, Ascendancy yeah. combo. So you unearth, you unearth it, and you don't care if it's gone at the end of the turn because you're, you're winning win before that turn. Yeah. yeah, Yeah, this card is really, really good. Um, this is maybe this is one of it's inching up the list towards Moldrifter as my favorite uh, creature of all oh time. Oh my! Yeah, I mean, I I know it's getting more popular because uh, Grimgrin Corpseborn oh, yes. is becoming more of a thing, and Fate Stitcher just turns him on in all sorts of ways. Yeah, without like, having the sack, it is just disgusting. Yeah, I I I like Fate Stitcher a lot. I also like Grimgrin. I really want to make a make a Grimgrin deck, but I feel like my my you more chasing deck already fulfills that <laughs> monster <laughs> that category of just. <laughs> killing everything <laughs> <laughs> all right you're up wedge all right all right next up is mind lock orb which not enough people know about this card it's three colorless one blue for an artifact from shards of alara players can't search libraries <laughs> oh wait, uh, wait why are we talking can't. about this card and oh, always goodness. oh man now people are gonna play it more often that's not what hey, i want yeah. hey which is what they should be doing uh, remember that expensive demonic tutor in your hand yeah Remember it just, that? It, remember uh, that fetch land? <laughs> oh gosh! Remember that half of whatever it, you you can't even play a solemn simulacrum. Okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get nothing. Yeah, like yeah. the best you can do is scrying. Like yep. that. That's the closest you can get, and it's, it is. It's just. It's such a good way to shut off strategies that, especially if you're not doing what they're doing. Like I know a few people who play Teferi, Mage of Zalfir, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or even the Planeswalker Teferi deck. Now they don't actually search nearly as much as other decks do right they kind of just go off the value in their hand yeah so you don't need so, to yeah it's just my lock orb is great if you're running especially if you're running a budget deck that doesn't even have fetch lands yeah. or tutors you yeah. can sort of monetarily bring people down to your level well and, and not just that like if you know it you can not put those things in your deck and you you just probably put like 10 cards in their deck like that are just worthless yeah yeah just yeah. do yep. nothing the yeah, amount of dead draws is unreal. Yeah. And there's better ways for you. You know, you can just have a deck that has, like you said, a lost scry instead, and you're getting that incremental value over them because they can't search your libraries, but you're doing this thing that they haven't loaded up their deck with in preparation for this card specifically. The great thing is yeah. you're in blue, and another way to tutor for something is to just draw a lot of cards, and blue can yep. definitely do that. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah, I, yeah I, it's, I, it's really important that they just can't, like, the, the, it's important to know that the word search that's what's stopping them. Mm -hmm. Like you can scry, you can look at however many of the top of your library you want. Yeah, you just can't search. It's right. very, it's very specific. It's yeah. that's yeah, it's a good call. People, people should play that card like way more often than they do. But now, if they start doing that, it's gonna make me mad now. Yeah, well, I mean, that's why also a card like even <laughs> Mind Sensor is so good. Yeah, is because it stops that exact uh, thing. Being able to stop yep. someone from searching the library in Commander when you have a hundred card decks and you're trying to find one card. It's so important. It's so. one of the things we yeah. talk about all the time is like the way one of the ways you can give consistency to your deck is to have a number of tutors because tutors then become virtual cop like multiple copies. Yeah. So you're not even actually playing a singleton deck anymore. Yeah. Because all your yeah. tutors are standing in. You know, you could have five tutors that are standing in for the one card you really need to find. Now you have six copies of that in your deck. Yep. Yep. A lot of value there. All right. On to my next card. A uh, fan favorite of Jimmy the Red would be Greater Gargadon. Yes, this thing has been printed twice. It was in Modern Masters and I think Time Spiral. Yeah, um, it was. It's nine in a red for a nine seven, and you're like, heck, no, I'm not gonna pay <laughs> that. But it has suspend ten for one red, so you can pay one red to suspend this in the sort of exile zone. And every upkeep, it loses a suspend counter until it hits zero, and then it's automatically cast and has haste. Um, it starts with 10. Counters. It starts with 10, yeah. But the big thing is that the other half of this card is sacrifice an artifact creature or land, remove a time counter from Greater Gargadon, activate this ability only if Greater Gargadon is suspended. So he is a the cheapest sack outlet you can get for one mana, and you can sacrifice 
any number of crazy things. Um, and I find that Commander is a game where you want to use your board, and a lot of times people that are playing blue are using other people's boards, or if they're playing something like Dead of Loyalty to steal a card from you, you can essentially sack in response to them taking stuff. You can use a Sacrifice Atlas as a defensive maneuver, which is why I really like Greater Gargadon. I can't count the amount of token players that have started using, that have picked up on mm -hmm. Gargadon's free sack outlet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it is, it is, even people that use, um, I think it's Crash. Uh, oh, the Blood Braided, know, yeah. Yeah, Crash players. And then I think the big one now, for me, that I've seen is Shatter Gang Brothers. Yes. People fill their decks with tokens and then either just get a free Greater Gargadon or if people mess with them, just sack to the Shatter Gang Brothers. Yep. It is... Yeah, the, the the utility on a free sacrifice outlet is unmatched. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I, we've talked about it before. If you just had a card and it didn't do anything else except for allow you to sack stuff for no effect, it would be totally playable in yeah. EDH. Staple. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in, and in this case, this one says, "Well, you do that a few times, we'll give you a nine seven creature." So that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's insane that this is still an overperformer. Like, I don't understand, because <laughs> you're right. Like, I don't see this in a lot of people's There's strategies, many, many decks that though, would be yeah. made better by having it. Like, for, for sure. instance, a board wipe <sighs> happens. You're like, okay, well, they're all going to die anyway. Sack them all the Greater Gargadon, and guess what? I get a 9-7 in my turn, and you get nothing. Yeah, I just leave just one counter on it. and then Such nice insurance. Yep. Like, yeah. Ugh. Okay, my turn. Blind Obedience. So it's one and a white for an enchantment. It has extort. Um, that's not important, so I won't even read it. What it says is <laughs> artifacts and creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. Nice. So this, you can play this, by the way, in any deck that has white, regardless of it having extort. It's right. not extort, just white black. Yeah, white black. Extort has white black, but it's in the reminder text, so you don't need to have black in your deck. Um, so this sounds like a small effect, right? Because it's just like they play a, a, a creature or an artifact, and it comes down, and it's tapped when it comes down. That doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but it's amazing the kind of stuff that this stops. Oh, yeah. Turn one soaring. Yeah. <laughs> or turn two soaring, I guess. It stops a lot of shenanigans having to do with infinite combos in particular. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kiki jiki Pestermite stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Stuff where... I mean, it's not like they couldn't keep making Pestermites, but all the Pestermites come into play tapped, so they won't be able to attack you that turn with it. So Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's pointless. Um, or just strategies where they make a million tokens on their turn, and they have haste, and they're going to attack you with it. Um, there's a lot of times where in EDH, where if you just had time to respond to it, it wouldn't be that scary. But because they do it, and then it hits you all on their turn, then it just kills everybody. So this is just one of those things that slows it down to the point where a lot of times you'll get a chance to re respond to something that you wouldn't have a chance otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think another use for blind obedience that, um, that, that I've noticed personal experience is Voltron strategies. Yes. Right. For people who love lightning or people who love putting like swift foot boots or lightning greaves on an Earl, the mist stalker mm -hmm. or playing like e even like Zergo helm smasher, a new one. He's, People are playing him now. This yeah. hoses him yeah. completely. Narset, yep. like Narset's just, another one, right? Yeah, it. Oh, it's just it's so good against such a variety of strat. It's amazing how much it does for what seems to be not that big of a deal. Right, Jaleva is another one. Those ones where they set up the top of their library really carefully, then they play their car, their their commander, and they're gonna put Swift Boots, boots, boots on, on it and it, use yeah. it right away, and they're yep. going to basically Calia win too, that yeah. turn. Yeah, and this just says nope. You gotta wait one turn. And in that one rotation of the table, usually somebody's gonna be able to find an answer. Yep. Yeah. Love that card. There's actually a lot of cards with that effect too. Kismet, there's um, mm -hmm. Frozen Aether, I think is another one. There's a there's Imposing Sovereign, there's a bunch with that effect, but yeah. Blind Obedience is I think the cheapest. And, and uh, specifically your opponents as well. Yes, exactly. Some of those do uh, yep. affect your own stuff. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm gonna stick with Blue just cause I love, I love this card. Uh, Mystic Speculation is one blue mana sorcery from Future Sight, has buyback for two colorless, because buyback is awesome, and it's just scry three. That's like a Sensei's Divining Top, but slightly more expensive. It's just efficient. You can do it every turn. It's colorless to buy it back. You can just scry three for one blue if you want. Scrying is so powerful. I don't I don't think people have really caught on. Is this in your Jaleva deck? No, it is not. This should be in the Jaleva well, deck. Jaleva and got, the Narset deck. Jaleva got torn apart. <laughs> You tore you you tore Jaleva Oh dear. Apart. Yeah. Uh, oh. What'd oh, she no. do to you? 
Well, I, I just replaced <laughs> it with Marchesa. <laughs> oh, you upgraded? You I found upgraded. another Wow. Yeah. Damn, poor Jaleva. Yeah, poor Jeez, Jaleva. harsh, dude. It's okay. Jeez. Um, yeah, I think and it's something that I've only really, really come into because Scry was introduced, um, I mean, it's been around forever, but it's, it's seen sort of a comeback in Theros block and, and uh, it's so important because it's like I'm, at, you know, if you have like, for instance, in standard, if you have a hand with temple is in it that let you scry one but you only have two lands in your opening hand you're actually a little safer keeping that hand because you can scry away you're the top card if it's not it, a yeah. land yeah so it the, helps you oh. smooth out your draws which is super important the way i try to explain it to people who who underestimate scry is um like scry two and draw one are very similar yeah i think right. in how good they are and it's it, it's really important that people understand that um, understanding what's coming and being able to move it yeah. is is just outrageous. It, you're 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 skipping turns basically, mm-hmm. or, or like you're you're um, generating turns yeah. and being able to buy it back is just it, it goes back to what we were talking about buyback before, where late game additional value. You want to talk about you want to look for something, mystic speculation. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna you can cast it more than one time, so you can just put those three on the bottom, do it again, put yeah. those three on the bottom. Like you can really dig. Let's not forget the there's filter. a card. There's a card called Prognostic Sphinx that when it attacks, you get to scry three, and people it's like an auto include in control decks that want to have yep. a win condition, and mystic speculation lets you do that without having to attack, without having to pitch a card to try and save your creature. You can just keep doing it over and over again wedge is absolutely better yeah wedge is absolutely right too because um yeah scry three is somewhere around like 1.2 cards is what it's worth Mm -hmm. um it's a little above the value of like draw one basically so it's pretty powerful yeah just because you can continue to do it you can put any number on the bottom you can sort the the order also if you have an ability that shuffles your deck and you scry three and you're like i don't like any of these cards you're like, well, I don't want to take a chance with the next one. I'm just going to fetch land and, and shuffle things up or whatever. There's lots of options you can do by being able to know what's on the top of your deck. Well, I mean, you might as well just put the three on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's also especially good with Mindlock Orb for those of you that, you know, are going to use that Yeah, because it's not oh, search. Because yeah. oh, you don't gosh. search. Yep. You don't search. You just grind the top three over and over again. All right. Uh, another card that I really like from, uh, is it Odyssey Conspiracy. and Conspiracy? Yeah. yeah, is Decimate. And if you're in these colors, you should probably put this in your deck. It will piss <laughs> some people off, but it's two, a red and a green, a sorcery speed uh, spell, and it says destroy target artifact, target creature, target enchantment, and target land. And I dare you to find any game of Commander that's four players or more by the fifth turn that doesn't have a target for all four of those. Um, for four man, you get to wreck four things. It's just the efficiency of it is very high. Yeah. Um, I, I, this should be in every deck that has red and green in it as far as Agreed. I'm concerned. It's Agreed. Just, Agreed. It, there are so many times when I'm playing a game and like, oh, my game plan is going great if it weren't for that enchantment or it wasn't for that artifact. Um, you rarely have to worry about this not being able to target stuff. You're always going to be able to get value off of it. And even if you're just killing like a token as the creature, it's fine. As long as you're able to get rid of that, you know, birthing pod and the uh, defense of the heart over there. Well, think if this card, it's kind of like a charm. I mean, think if it was, you know, one a red and a green and it said destroy target artifact or target creature or target enchantment mm-hmm. or target land. That card would be totally playable. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. This costs one more and it destroys all of those things not just or you know you get to destroy four things so it's it's very powerful yeah it's totally underplayed i think for especially for the kind of list we've done so far i I think like for for every card we've given you know legitimate reasons to try to like back it up i don't think decimate needs that i think it completely (laughs) speaks for itself there's no hidden message here like yep the card destroys four things yeah for four mana yeah it's as efficient as it gets if you don't know why that's good well (laughs) we can't help you you. yeah Yeah, you need to read a book (laughs) (laughs) nice all right right, my next card is oh i like this card a lot it's reconnaissance it's uh one white for an enchantment it says pay zero remove target attacking creature you control from combat and untap it that creature neither deals nor receives combat damage this turn. What? This zero? is a little bit of a, zero? Yeah, this is a little bit of a complicated card, but it has a ton of different interactions that you can use with it. One, mm-hmm. which is very obvious, is just like, hey, I've got five two twos and he's got a seven seven. So I just attack with everything and whichever one he blocks, I pull it out of combat and the other <laughs> one's hit. Right? That's that easy. That is really nice. But the way that phases work, 
See, when this card was created, they didn't have all the complicated phases within the combat phase. But the way that phases work is a creature is still an attacking creature even after combat damage was dealt. Oh, right. So you can pull your creature... You can use this to untap your creature after mm-hmm. it's dealt its damage, and it will still have dealt its damage. It doesn't go back in time and remove that damage. So, Did you see that whole rulings fiasco from earlier this year about reconnaissance? Yeah, there was an errata uh, made at a certain point where reconnaissance didn't work this way, and then that created... It said some, something like activate the ability only before the combat damage step. Yeah. It and was, then they came back and removed it. Yes, exactly. So now it works wow. as it reads... Yeah, now it works as it reads. Which um, is amazing. You can which have is how it worked damage. for a long time before they stupidly yeah. tried to change it. <laughs> um, they got yelled at. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it wasn't, so. it's not crazy broken. It's just, it has a lot of uses. And also, let's say you've got a Kalia deck or I was a just Jaleva deck. I Kalia is amazing. Or, yeah, or a Narset deck or something like that where you want your creature to attack, but it might die if you do that. And now, but but it has a trigger when it attacks. Anafenza, um, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, the dethrone mechanic. Uh, there's a million things that say when this creature attacks, something happens. But sometimes you don't want to attack because if I attack with it, I'm opening it up to being ki- blocked and killed. Yeah. Well, this takes all that away. There's also shenanigans with first strike because that's another combat phase. So sometimes you can have your creature deal its first strike damage and then oh, pull and then it out of combat. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to sort of use this card in like tricky. Interesting. Yeah, tricky yeah. manner. I, I think the best part is it costs zero, and you can do any number of creatures that are attacking on your side. I mean, the worst case scenario for it is all my creatures have vigilance now, basically. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. That's the worst case, you know, which is in commander a lot stronger than it is in the other formats because again, if you're playing multiplayer, you're on defense three or four turns, and you're only on offense one. Yeah. Shields up for free. Yep. It's a great Love card. that card. Play it, peeps. It's good. All right, Wedge. Yeah. What you got? All right. I, I guess we'll, we'll move on to black. All right. Uh, the next card I want to talk about is Filth. Ooh, uh, nice. It sounds gross, but it 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 sounds I mean, filthy. I mean, it is. Totally sweet, though. This card is totally it filthy. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, three colorless, one black from Judgment. It's a 2-2. Two, two, has Swamp Walk. As long as Filth is in your graveyard and you control a swamp, creatures you control have Swamp Walk. We've, I've, I, I think Anger and Wonder are definitely more popular versions of this. Yes. Anger, mm-hmm. the red one that gives haste. Wonder, the blue one that gives flying. Uh, flying. But I think Swamp Walk is way more relevant than any of the other walks. Yeah. Um, well, what's the reason because, there? I'm curious. Oh, I, I guess it's playgroup by playgroup. But I feel like right now in um, just Commander Meta in general, I see more decks like Marchesa, Nekusar, Mimeoplasm, Carador. Uh-huh. Right. Then I and Kalia, then I do Rafik and Zedru. And mm-hmm. I, I feel like right now black is really popular. It's very Commander. powerful as well. I think black, Yeah, it's also really strong. Yeah. The other card I wanted to mention with it was Urborg because it just Yeah, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, yeah. Urborg yeah. by the way, a legendary land that cr- makes all uh non-basics or just all lands are also all lands swamps. Are swamps. All lands are swamps in addition to their other types. So That right there, that combo is brutal cuz you basically say all my creatures are unblockable. Straight unblockable. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Wow. Yeah, no, that's that, it's an absolutely for 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 how I feel like Swamp Walk is just not given enough attention when you can use a filthy combo like that. Yeah, not filthy. <laughs> filthy. I uh, like that. That nailed great. it. Uh, we need know, to I tell D. D's playing. Uh, he he made a Giza deck and he's making like fifty million zombie tokens. Oh yeah, and uh, he needs that combo in his deck for sure. Yeah, I hope Herborg's in that deck because that that it definitely... wouldn't normally be. It's mono black. Well, well just for that combo, just for you that might combo, yeah. you would. Yeah, definitely. All right, my next card is going to be another black one, and it's Buried Alive. Um, and it's a card that works actually pretty good with Filth. Uh, it's two in the black for a sorcery. Search your, search your library for up to three creature cards and put them into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. I think this is really specifically good just for Commander because there's so many cards you want in your in your bin because they give you an effect. Like Anger, Wonder, Filth, uh, Genesis, and the Souls, any of the Souls, Soul of New Phyrexia. It's a great way to just give you like an insurance policy on turn three if you've got no other action. You can bury the live... Find the three things that need to be in your graveyard and be like, sweet, I don't need to worry about board wipes once I have five mana because the soul of Neophrexia is in there, etc. So this just has tons of targets, and there's a lot of other ways you can abuse it too with other things, fetching cards from your graveyard back to your hand, finding a way to drop a huge creature in there and then spending two mana or five mana with buyback to put it in your hand. You know, it's like there's lots of 
it, once you can treat your graveyard as just second hand, then it's a much more powerful mechanic. Yeah, I, I think right now, especially with Sidisi just coming out, Buried Alive is, you know, more relevant than ever. Yeah. Because um, it just directly, like, boom, zombie. Yep. Like, it's just, it's very, and it, and it feels your graveyard, like, many other reanimator strategies would like yeah it's such a the format is there's so much graveyard recursion because we all want value and so you never want a card to just go to the graveyard and you're done with it forever like almost every deck has a way to reuse cards from its graveyard so it's like you said you, you it's kind of like half a tutor like mm -hmm. you put them someplace where you're gonna have an easier time getting it so yeah it's a really good card oh here's one i talked about um with titania yeah with titania and every time i put i ended up putting this into a bunch of decks because i was like this card is amazing it's uh, good it's probably in your angus uh mckenzie deck or something like that right like it seems very i don't know seems on theme constant mists it's one in a green for an instant it has buyback sacrifice a land so when you play this card you can sacrifice a land and then it goes back into your hand instead of the graveyard and it says, creatures deal no combat damage this turn. So it's a fog that you can reuse at the cost of sacrificing a land. Yep. And when it, you're going to need this late game more than anything else, right? When, right. When life totals are getting dicey, which means you're going to have extra lands. And this is an instant, so you can still tap it. You can, you can, t you can sacrifice the land you tap to do it, so you sell yep. mana up. There's lots of ways to get this back. And there's so many times in EDH where you just have 12 or 13 lands on the table and somebody's going to attack you for lethal with, a, like I said, a Kiki Jiki infinite or uh, they made 27 4 4 flyers uh, on the previous end step or, yeah. you know, all these crazy shenanigans that we're so used to in EDH where you just go, OK, I sacrifice a land and, I, and that's it. I'm safe from that. I yeah, like it. No, there, you don't even need to justify or like like normally at least in this situation you don't need to justify like oh i have to sack a land i better get something out of it even if you have trouble with that just play like crucible of worlds yeah or yeah true life from the loam or like but there's even so if those, many things you can do even if those cards are not in your deck this is perfectly fine oh because, yeah it's still great like how often in a game if here was the trade like listen hey you can either lose the game right now or you can sacrifice one of your lands you <laughs> oh will gosh. sacrifice your land every time every dang time yeah. so yep so, yeah, it's a very good card. Every time I've had it in my hand, I've been like, holy cow, I feel so safe. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes and me you, unhappy knowing And if you now cast that... it one time, they know you have it. So they're like, well, I'm not going to attack that guy because it does nothing. <laughs> you know, so all of a sudden they're looking at each other and not you with their creatures. It's amazing. It makes me really sad, too, because I know that once you have two green mana up, I can't. It's very hard for me to win quickly. <laughs> it's hard for you to win with a creature-based strategy. Yeah, exactly. That has to do with attacking, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Dude, this one, this next one on your list, Wedge, is old school. This is yeah. alpha. Oh, my gosh. You're talking about the next black one, right? Yeah. yeah I remember oh, having yeah. rules arguments about this card when we first started playing because nobody knew how, how instance worked, really. <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right. Howl from Beyond is X and one black for an instant. Target creature gets plus X plus zero until end of turn. Very straightforward, but so powerful. Yeah, yeah. In the right situations, I mean, Skitterix instant kill. First of all, yep. oh, yeah. Oh yeah, like we'll stay there. But even after that, commander damage is a thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So just you're dead. Uh, yeah, you just you just die, and it's it's it doesn't give trample. True, but it's so it's such a simple and it's so cheap. One black, and then just whatever you want. Yeah, it, it's fire breathing. You'll have with black. cabal coffers. Like just, it's it's amazing. Yeah, and the mono, especially if you're like, all right, swing for my general for like three, and they're like, oh, you know, it's not gonna kill me. <sighs> Fine, whatever, let it through. And you're like, -do 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 -do, here's 20 mana, <laughs> and you die, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's really a, a meta card, um, because there are very few combat tricks uh, used in, in Commander, because we're just generally going for bigger things than like winning creature combat one time. So people just aren't worried about like, giant growths and crap and so yeah. they're they will never see this coming like so often how often in commanders are like i swing at you with my commander how much is it seven okay i take, I seven. take it yeah yeah and then you're like okay you're dead <laughs> <laughs> like no one will see that coming i you'll you know you will drop fools like fast with that it, yeah. it's definitely taking advantage of bad habits yeah that's definitely especially when so much of commander games happen out of combat or, or like, like you just yeah. said it's almost emotionless mm -hmm. like oh you attack okay fine like that's no one no one will expect Howl from Beyond. Personal guarantee from Wedge. <laughs> no one will expect Howl from Beyond. No I one promise. ever expects it. Yeah, that's ever. great. That's actually why I think a lot of the cards are on this list is just because people don't see them very often and they don't realize, you know, like 
usually when you're like, all right, I'm going to go look up the best EDH cards or whatever, you get the ones that are that cost more because they are historically just better cards. But cards like this just that have a lot of utility in the right deck and especially in the right meta too. And you're right, it is completely the pattern of behavior, which is like swing for watch. All right, sure, whatever. And like just like whatever damage is is nothing to my forty life, and that's a great way to just end things real fast. All right, my Thanks, next man. card is one. Uh, I guess Wizards caught on; they knew it was an overperformer, this and they reprinted it. Yeah. They oh, reprinted it. Yeah, it used to be in Time Spiral, and they reprinted it in Commander twenty fourteen. It's called Ixadron, and oh gosh, this card is so <laughs> rough. It's three and two blue for a star star illusion. As Ixitron enters the battlefield, turn all other non-token creatures face down, and they become morphs, two two creatures that can't turn back up. And Ixitron's power and toughness are each equal to the number of face down creatures on the battlefield. Oh this, boy. This card is rough. Yeah, it's really rough. Because it's a board <laughs> wrath kind of. It reminds me of um, It's like Swan Song for everyone. It reminds me of humility. <laughs> Humility, uh, oh yeah. Which is an extremely powerful card and a, and a format staple, um, right. which is a white enchantment that all creatures lose all abilities and become 1-1s. One this basically says all creatures lose all abilities and become 2-2s. Two um, super powerful. I mean, a lot of people play Humility. I think this card is not that widely played, and yeah. uh, it basically does the same thing. It's could, Yeah. Could you imagine, like, you could do Ixadron and then, like, Anger of the Gods, <laughs> and then just, just wipe, wipe the everybody's board, everything? Yeah. I'm imagining this is my Marchesa deck when I've already sacked all my creatures to come back at the end of the turn, and then I play Ixadron so that I get full creatures back yeah. and everyone loses oh, man. their guys. Yeah, so uh, it's definitely going to impact the board in an There's another reason that you way. would want something like Greater, Greater Gargadon or a Sack Outlet. Like yeah, that card protector. is a really good, uh, r shows you the power of having a Sack Outlet because otherwise your creature's stuck face down. Yeah, you, know, you but just have to hope someone blocks them. You're, you're actually like, like, I want all these guys to die so I yeah. can somehow get them back as like regular dudes. Yeah, pretty cool. I, I definitely, I think another thing that makes Ixodron uh, better is one, it's in blue and this type of removal is rare for the color in general, but it's also right. cheap. Right for the color, yeah. Five like, mana for that is insane. like if, if yeah. If you look for big blue removal, we're talking like seven, eight, nine yep. mana even. Like five mana to do this is not common. Yeah, definitely. Like it's it's uh, the utilities. And never mind real. that the dude's probably like an eight eight or a ten ten or something. Yep. Like when you're yep. done doing that. So oh yeah. yeah. Not only did you just mess up everybody else's creatures, you created a huge threat at the yep. same time. Yeah. You also, know. something completely out of character for blue. Yeah, nobody's ri <laughs> nobody's expecting that thing to, to come down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my next one is Croson Restorer. It's two and a green for a one-two druid. It's uh, basically a voyaging satyr. It says tap, untap, target land, but it has threshold. What threshold is? You can only play the ability if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, and if you do have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you can tap the Croson Restorer and untap up to three target lands. Wow. I love cards like these. I really like Voyaging Satyrs and, and Cures mm -hmm. Followers and stuff like that. I'm a big fan of tap effects in general just from Old Magic. But also, uh, they're really good ramp. And they work really well with some of the lands that produce more than one mana. Yeah, like Nykthos. Nykthos. Um, you know, there's uh, Temple of the False God. There's um, the, the lands that you have to return a land to your hand. And they come into play tap, but they tap for uh, all the Ravnica guild colors mm -hmm. right um, yeah you know if you have those type of things and the crochet restore all of a sudden you're tapping her for six mana maybe more um it becomes very very powerful also if you play things like market festivals or verdant havens um which i do all the time because i play a lot of five color decks uh so all of a sudden you can tap and untap just untapping one land can give you four mana sometimes if right. you're untapping three lands and by the way, Threshold, extremely powerful in EDH because the games go longer and you just have a longer amount of time in the game where you have seven cards in your graveyard. Yeah, so. and even without Threshold, the card is still good on its own. You know, if it's just like, hey, I need to have more versions, you know, my deck needs to have these guys that untap lands and I may not draw my Voyaging Seder, but at least I know I have two cards that do the same thing. Yeah. You know? In EDH, I think there's a good chance for that kind of card to actually be better than like Birds of Paradise. Right. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's and Birds of Paradise is a you know it's an eternal playable card. So something that's sort of that can be better than that I think is is worth a look. And I just don't see those ever. And I think they're really powerful. I mean, being a Birds of Paradise for utility lands is 
hysterically good. Yes. And there's many things. Uh, I've got another card I'll talk about later in conjunction with this one, but it, there's many lands, like you said, utility lands, that if you, you, if you use them twice, it's just totally powerful. Yeah. All right. Moving on to red now for you, huh? Oh, You notice yeah. how Wedge is like all organized and going in order of color and stuff, and we're yeah, just like hopping around to whatever we feel like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's I'm putting just... us to shame, man. <laughs> you want me to get crazy? I, I <laughs> you... could go to green if you want. Oh, my oh, gosh. Snap. Wait, Wedge. Slow down, man. Don't, <laughs> don't go too nuts. You know, you're right. I'm not ready for this. Yeah. I'm not. I'm like sweat. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Okay. okay. All right. Aftershock. Two colorless, two red for a sorcery from Tempest. Destroy target artifact, creature, or land. Aftershock deals three damage to you. Ooh, the I reason I love this card is because it's spot removal in red. Yeah. yeah. And yep. it, it goes back to what I guess is like a sub theme for my card so far, which is things that they're not supposed to do. Right. Yeah, stuff outside doing. of the color pie, kind of. Right. Chaos Warp yeah. is an incredibly powerful card for red because it does something red does not do, typically. Yeah, it's... A- a- Aftershock basically reminds your opponents that they can't treat you like a normal red deck. Like... Yeah. You... you, you Like, if someone plays a giant, you know, 8-8 creature, they're like, the red the red player is not going to burn this down. He doesn't have to. Like, yeah. He could yeah, just Aftershock. Just moves it, yeah. And uh, especially with more aggressive strategies um, that I see, uh, Aftershock, I mean, you dealing three damage to yourself, not that big a deal. Yeah, right? especially like, in Commander, you start at 40. I mean, it's... It, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think just having having spot removal in red at all, regardless of the drawback, is just so valuable mm-hmm. that it, it definitely warrants uh, inclusion to a lot of strategies. that, And most people don't even know this card exists. Yeah, you don't see it very much. You should definitely see it more often. Uh, it's kind of like a charm also. Um, yeah, it's got the utility to do yeah, all those things. I guess that's something we're noticing with a lot of our cards uh, in this overperformers category is we like to have a lot of versatility. Yeah. You know, Fate Stitcher yeah. is another very versatile card. Uh, yeah. You know, that first, the Dawn Charm that you mentioned, super versatile. So, yeah, yeah. the more things it can do, which it just means it's going to be more applicable whenever you draw it. And the worst thing to have in Commander is a dead draw on turn seven or eight when things are really going. And you need a card that can do a lot of things right so aftershock definitely qualifies for that um my next card is also red and it's a card that uh, i don't ever see and i don't know why it's the perfect red against blue card i guess it's price of glory two and a red for an enchantment whenever a player taps a land for mana during another player's turn destroy that land uh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the perfect this is sound. just the perfect <laughs> card for me this when is i play awesome my card. mono red deck it's like how many instants do i have in there like okay five how many instances does everyone else have so many more right. 20 yeah and stopping them from using that to combat trick or whatever or just forcing them to be like all right if you you're really gonna pay it's the price of glory if you want to tap that land when i'm doing stuff on my turn it's it's one of those cards we talked about this i think last episode or maybe a couple episodes ago which a lot of people would naturally shy away from because it hurts you also Mm -hmm. but you can build your deck in a way that it hurts you less than them and that those cards can be the most powerful cards in magic where you sort of build around it and they change the rules of the game but you knew that coming in so your deck doesn't you know is playing according to the new rules and not Mm -hmm. the old rules yeah yeah it's kind of like mindless orb or mind lock orbs. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like no, it's yeah, it's kind of like like relative value. Yeah, and it's changing like the rules of the game to the point where, like, like I said, you're prepared for it. They're not. Yeah. Oh, I guess I'll talk about my second card as well because it, it is very similar to this in red, and it's Stone Shaker Shaman. Uh, also two and a three for a one one human shaman creature, and it says at the end of each player's turn, that player sacrifices an untapped land. So it just says that you need to tap Ugh. out all your mana, even if you're not using it. It's the same. You just have idea. no mana available during yeah, other yeah. players' turns. Yeah, it's the same idea as um, as Price of Glory, where it's like I don't want you to do stuff on my turn, so I'm going to force you to tap all your mana out. And as a red player, it's like fine, I'll tap all my mana out anyway, and it doesn't matter. But everyone else who is used to either flashing stuff in super cool or whatever, it's like no, every single turn that goes around, as long as that land is untapped, you're going to have to sacrifice one of them. It stops people from countering any of your stuff. That's really what it's yeah. supposed to do. And it's yeah. like red yeah. lockdown. Like, how often do you see that happen? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely it's definitely a card that I I wish I didn't see on your list just because <laughs> it, it it hurts so bad as someone that loves to go big. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I've, the only reason I knew about it is because I've seen it before in um, one of my friends plays a Raka Mar deck, mm-hmm. Raka uh, which Mar. is a Conflux uh, commander. It's uh, I, like no one knows Raka Mar. It's 
two colorless, two red for a 2-2 two -two with haste. And you can pay one red and tap it to put a 3-1 red elemental creature token with haste into play. So it's I, I, I only see Stone Shaker Shaman in like super small decks, but it's so hard to play against. It's so hard to play against. Yeah, that sounds pretty pretty vicious. Ugh. It's it's just dirty. Like oh, I'm so upset that this is on this list right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is the one I was talking about that goes along with the Croson Restorer, which was the Voyaging Seder with Upside. Um, it's the Thawing Glaciers. It's a land. It's uh, from what is this from Alliances? Yeah, Alliances. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and it's uh, Vintage Masters. it comes into play tapped. So it's a land that comes into play tapped. It says you may tap one one colorless and tap uh, Thawing Glaciers. Search your library for a basic land and put it into play tapped. This does not count towards your one land per turn limit. Shuffle your library afterwards. At the end of your turn, return Thawing Glacier to owner's hand. So basically this comes into play tapped and on your next turn you use it, it finds you a land and then it returns to your hand. So every other turn it can sort of ramp you, um, which just that alone is very powerful because it's colorless, right? So it can go in the colors that have trouble ramping like red mm -hmm. and blue and white. Um, so that alone is very powerful. And then if you can combine it with things like Fate Stitcher, things like Cross and Restore, things that turn, untap the down, land and yeah. use it twice, you can use it twice in the turn because at the end of turn, it returns to your owner's hand. It's not after you use it. So you can use it more than once in a turn. And sometimes, you know, I've had turns where I have a Voyaging Seder and I have a Fate Stitcher and I use it three times and, I, and all of a sudden, my turn five, I have nine lands in play. Oh my gosh. You know, so... <laughs> That's dirty. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very powerful if abused, but even if you don't abuse it, even if just every other turn, you just basically, this allows you to just continuously hit your land drops at least every other turn for right. basically no costs. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely one of those cards that warrants the, what I would consider the auto deserted temple include, mm. because that's one of my favorite cards. That's just like one of the standard, it's just a land that like you pay a man and tap it to untap a land. Right, right. exactly. And like Thawing Glaciers is just so, oh, it's just so good. It's exactly what you want in a format where you're color restricted. Yep. Good yeah, card. Very good card. I don't see Thawing Glacier very often at all. I'm always surprised that people just don't. Like, it should be in a lot of decks. Green, maybe not. Every other yeah. color probably wants it. Yeah. Yeah. And even then, in green, it's good because you have all the untap your land effects. Oh, man. I love your next card, dude. Yeah. This is... Uh, this One of is Josh's the, favorites. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah? We're still back in red, right? Yeah. For me? Yep. <laughs> okay, yep. good. It's up to you. You uh, can jump around or you don't have to. It's, it's oh, no, totally I your mean, call. <laughs> I've come this far, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. We got to finish All strong. Right. So, Viashino Heretic. Two colorless, one red from Urza's Legacy. It's a 1-3. You can pay one colorless and one red and tap it to destroy target artifact. And Viashino Heretic deals uh, damage to that artifact's controller equal to its casting cost. That's so just like kick you while you're down that <laughs> little extra <laughs> bit. It is just the dirtiest. Like, yeah. It just makes you like salivate when your opponents play artifacts. And oh. even if they don't, you have cards like Liquid Metal Coating and Mycosynth Lattice. Right, that right. turn their seven artifacts. That, that just... do it for you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it. This go, I have this in a, a deck with um, Fate Stitcher, and so you just start mowing them down oh, like two at a time. Gosh. And well, of course, that deck has a bunch of other untap your creature effects. And this right, is why you yeah. got it right in Angus... Mackenzie, because you have a bunch of untap your creature effects because you want to use fog all the time, so you might as well also destroy a bunch of artifacts, you monster. Oh, but I don't think it's in the colors, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I I can't put it in Angus Mackenzie. Oh, he's but, not. He doesn't uh, have red. Oh, okay. But it's but it it's currently in a mono red Kirkesh deck I'm building. Oh, <laughs> you're building another. Nice. Oh, good. I'm so happy that you're building a second commander deck. It means that you're. I don't think you're really a commander player until you have two decks. Yeah, there you go. That's reasonable. Uh, I've always <laughs> usually had like one at a time that I was focusing on, but but now it's just I I really like Kirkesh a lot. Yeah, he's very. And yeah, he's definitely a commander card. He's so funny, and Vishino v uh, Heretic is just the perfect card to put in a deck where just any like you just hate artifacts, you just hate them. Right, you hate them. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> like, I just I mean, and you could build so many, you can build around it so well. Like I said, like Liquid Metal Coating. That's not the only card like that. Right. Yeah. There, no, there's just, many there's many cards that turn your you know. Like, no, it's it's severely underrated. I don't know why it's not everywhere. Yeah, I've actually never no, I've seen one in play ever that wasn't mine. Like people just don't like, know about that card. Criminal. Yeah. Criminal. Yeah. They'll play cards that destroy target artifact and like like shatter. And it's like, well, 
Why don't you? Why don't you just have the ability to do that every turn, like, and deal damage to their face? Yeah, like, yeah. or at least do like shattering spree, where he can do every yeah. artifact. You know, yeah. as long as he can pay for it. So wake up, people! Viashino heretic. <laughs> it's the real deal. It's the deal. Yeah, and three dollars by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> if I the command zone, we have more oh, pop pull than we do. That would be amazing if we could do that, <laughs> guys. Everyone, buy. Uh, I just think it was just a terrible card. Um, this next card that he's about to talk about. Yeah, exactly. About. Oh, buy it's not terrible. Reap. Uh, it's one and a green for an instant. And this is sort of going along with your uh, sort of the meta discussion we had about your group wedge, where you're seeing a lot of black um, players playing black. Um, it's an instant return. Any t number of target cards from your graveyard to your hand. You cannot choose more cards than the number of black permanents target opponent controls. Um, you could potentially do this for two mana. You could get like seven cards back in like yeah, the right it's situation. Crazy. And instant speed too. Yeah. Um, it's not just creatures, it's not just uh, artifacts or enchantments, it's specifically target cards. So you can just just search through your graveyard and get a bunch of really good stuff back for such cheap cost. Um, again, meta dependent, but when it goes off, it is a very powerful card. Uh, it, it's definitely a card that uh, they tried to counter the power by saying, oh, you can't choose more cards, number of black permanents, target opponent controls. Uh -huh. But... But in but it wasn't ready for something like Commander, right? right. Four players or five players. Like it just it, it's clearly a card that just did that just isn't translating to its power level, right? Yeah. Right. Which is my favorite kind of card, which was printed way before Commander. Said something that silly that you didn't realize at the time could do what it does, and now look at it. I mean, it's definitely uh, one of the great things about this card, too, is uh, you don't usually want to cast it early in the game, which is when it would be less powerful because your graveyard's not very full. And that's the point in the game where there will be less permanence on the table in general. So this is a late game card that that you want to be a late game card because that's the point in the game where there's likely to be the most black permanence and the most stuff in your graveyard to go get. Yeah. So it, it synergizes very well with itself. Also, there's a card. It's on the restricted list. Uh, in vintage it's called regrowth and it's a sorcery speed version of this that only gets one card out of your graveyard like that's how powerful like that card was on the restricted list with demonic tutor with wheel of uh, fortune yeah with uh channel back in the day like that's how powerful they thought this card was and so reap is an instant speed version of regrowth that with massive upside yeah massive upside yeah it's just very good card that was a good pick, man. Thanks. Yeah, I was looking. Uh, that one, I that was an internet research card that I'm now. I'm like, well, time to buy four copies. <laughs> I knew about that card only because it's a, a, a lore card. And oh. it has like, actual like, characters in it. Like There's a whole story behind it and everything. It's pretty sweet. Really interesting. Yeah, you can, you can tell by the art there's a lot going on as well. I just thought that was The Last Supper. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to watch our video if, you don't, if you're not familiar with the art. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to describe it to you other than it looks like The Last Supper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my next card is Other World Atlas. This is a very Josh card. It's four yep. mana for an artifact. It says tap, put a charge counter on Other World Atlas. You can also tap, and each player draws a card for each charge counter on Other World Atlas. This is another one of those cards that falls in the vein of like a lot of people shy away because it's giving everybody stuff. Yeah. You know, and and usually your mindset is you want to play cards that only give you something. You know, you don't want to play a creature that gives everybody else a creature. You don't want to, you know, play a, an enchantment that does benefit for everybody. But the thing about Otherworld Atlas that I really like is you're in charge of it. Right. So what you can do is you take a couple turns and you tap and you put two or three uh, charge counters on it. And now every time you tap it, everybody's going to draw three cards. And what you can do is end step before your turn, everybody draws three cards, and then on your turn, do it again. And now you've drawn six cards, so is everybody else, but it's your turn. Yeah. So you get the yep. first use of those six cards that were drawn. You know, this is a type of card I think that people just see it and they go, oh, that's a Nekusar deck. But you can actually get a lot of value just by timing this, and you're in charge of the timing of it. Also, I've said this many times in the past, I'll say it again. Once you get to a certain amount of cards, and I believe that's around four or five, if everyone's drawing that many per turn, then card advantage doesn't matter in your game anymore. So you can design your deck in such a way that it doesn't worry about card advantage because it can negate card advantage because mm -hmm. everybody's just drawing so many cards. So it's another, it's like Price of Glory, which we talked about earlier. It's another card that changes the basic rules of how the game is played, but your deck is actually, you know, built with the new rules in mind and not the old rules. Yeah. 
I was gonna say the as soon as I saw Other World Atlas, I just Nekasar was like the first yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what yeah. everybody thinks. But, <laughs> but it actually goes really well in say the Titania deck because mm-hmm. you know right. it goes really well in mono red because mono red just doesn't get to draw a lot of cards. Yeah. So you don't care if everybody's drawing a lot of cards. You're because, gonna do more with yours and yeah. they might have to discard, but you can guarantee like play out your hand or whatever. Yeah, and you yeah. can choose when everybody draws those cards. So you can draw it, you have the chance to use them before they do. Yeah. Especially if you're playing the cards we were talking about earlier, where they can't cast in, any spells during your turn. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden it's like su- way more powerful because you're gonna draw six cards and you get to play them and nobody can interact with you. So. Just a lot of ways to use that card. Don't shy away from cards that give everybody benefit because yeah. just think of ways like, oh, how can I maximize the benefit I'm getting from this? And they, they'll get some benefit, but they're not maximizing it. Yep. You're, and you end up doing better in that exchange than everyone else. Exactly. Plus, Otherworld Atlas, I will, I've gone on about this card, but <laughs> you play that card. There's many cards you play. Most cards you'll play, like people are, are going to eye you and be like, ooh. Yeah, no thanks, yeah. It's like there's a threat meter and they have it and it's for everybody. And, and every card you play ticks your threat meter up. But not that card. You play other word Atlas and they're like, sweet. That actually ticks down your threat meter. It's like, well. It's like howling mine. <laughs> yeah, it's like, do I yeah. want to kill that guy or do I want to kill the guy that's letting me draw a lot of cards? I'll kill that guy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're everyone's best friend until you win. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. Oh, we're moving on to green now. Well, wedges. Oh, man. Yeah, Things wedges are getting green. nuts. Yeah, we're, we're there. Go we, crazy, the Wedge! full Wooberg. <laughs> what could be next? Artifacts? Who knows? I, I, hey, it's a mystery, all right? <laughs> you, don't, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know me, okay? <laughs> all right. Um, okay, next up, Green Seeker. One green for a 1-1 one, one elf from Time Spiral. You can pay one green, tap it, and discard a card to search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. I love cards that do this. Yeah, yeah I agree. Like, uh, I love Shaman cards that and... fill your graveyard. I love cards that filter land for you. Yeah, not it's to just, mention, it's... <sighs> let's say you have two of the three colors you need, and you draw another one of those lands, just discard that land to get the right one. Yeah. Like, there are so many strategies that a card like this can go in. Yeah. You can use the discard effect to put reanimate stuff in your graveyard. Yeah. You yeah. can use it to put Vengevine in your graveyard. You can use it to get the lands you need. Like, there's just, it's it's ridiculous how much this does. Even if you don't do any of that stuff, it's just ramp. Yeah. So yep. it just turns one card into your hand. It, the card now says, this is a basic land of your choice, and it doesn't count towards your one land per turn. Like, that's what it did. It turned one of your cards into that card. Which is a I just, which is a pretty good card. It just means I I'm in, on turn four. I've got five mana instead of four. Like yeah, and you can yeah. keep doing that as much as you want. But yeah, I really like. I mean, it's another thing that people shy away from. Like the oh, everyone has to draw, or like oh, you have to discard a card. What isn't that? Why Liliana of the Veil so good or whatever? It's like no, actually, there. This is Commander where so many of your cards have utility in the bin. So it's a good card. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a land version of Fauna Shaman. So this is an amazing card with Blood Gas because. You discard Bloodgast, and then you get the land put into play, and then he jumps into play. <laughs> that's actually a yeah. really fun little interaction there. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. I mean, and uh, Green Seeker is probably going to be. I mean, I guess not probably, but she could fit just as easily into a Golgari based deck than just like you know, a, just a green based deck. Like discarding yeah. cards. No, you want her with black, you know, I think for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like definitely. she's she she just fits so well there. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right, my next card is, uh, it's an artifact, and it's also specifically one that I think of when I need cards for my red deck that doesn't, isn't able to draw cards otherwise, but has 100 goblins out. It's Slate of Ancestry, a four drop uh, from specifically the dual decks, Elves versus Goblins. You can imagine what side this was on. Uh, For four mana, you tap it, discard your hand, draw a card for each creature you control. So red is all about getting value off of goblins whether it's a like a goblin rabble master that puts creatures in or a uh, or like a pony back brigade or just any any sort of way to like get more goblins out when you play it kiki jiki for instance and when you're discarding your hand of zero for instance to draw four or five cards for four mana that's definitely worth it or if you're discarding your hand of two to draw six like just yeah. do that like I've, <laughs> I've seen people that are like yeah. shot, gun shy to do that. No, six is more than two. Just discard the two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this card, it's like in like wrist decks or any token decks. I have a deck with this in it, and I've drawn you know forty cards off of it in one turn. You know, discard discard my three cards, draw forty. Yeah, 
Yeah, and by the way, you can do it in instant speed. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah, need it. Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely printed during a time because I, I remember this card was printed in onslaught during a time where mass tribal strat like this is where goblins and elves mm -hmm. were huge, right? right? Um, and it just it it helps you do something that those colors don't usually do. Mm -hmm. Like why is guy is cradle one hundred seventy dollars? You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. yep. Like there there's a reason. And slate of Entropy lets you cheat in the only way that they really care about cheating, right? Yeah, because <laughs> like, you want to have guess, a lot like, of features anyway. Yeah. yeah, but it, it's really good in white too. I think with a lot of token white strategies, yeah, uh, yep. and and white's another color that just doesn't draw right. cards very good. Rebels plays this. Yep. I know a few Rebels players that yep. play this. Yeah, yeah, very good card. My next one is a mechanic. Ah, uh, good mechanic. Not too. like a car mechanic. It's a a, <laughs> a card mechanic. It's the transmute mechanic. This is something I'm surprised I don't see very much because it's it's like a tutor. Um, the card I use it on the most is Muddle the Mixture. Muddle the Mixture Ooh. is two blue. It's an instant. It says target or counter target instant or sorcery spell. But it has transmute. Its transmute cost is one and two blue. And what transmute is, you pay the one and two blue, you discard this card, search your library for a card with the same converted mana cost as this card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Transmute only as a sorcery. So it's a, it's a tutor. It's a, Well, first of all, it's a counter spell. But if you don't want to use it for that, you can tutor for anything that costs three mana. Anything, not yeah. color specific, not spell specific, right. nothing. You can get an artifact that's a three drop. You can get so much stuff. Yeah, it's super powerful because it's just another way to tutor. And it's, you know, it, there's a lot of transmute in blue, um, which is a color that doesn't tutor particularly well unless you want to get specifically an instant or sorcery. So mm -hmm. uh, the transmute mechanic is just something that I, I would definitely look at on a lot of different cards. There's a wall, I forget what it's called, but it has the same thing. And it's like, I actually put that in my deck and have never cast it as a wall. I've only used it to transmute. Really? I mean, a lot of people say that about um, Talaria West. Uh huh. Yep. Is is really big for that? Yeah, uh, Talaria West is a land. It's the zero mana cost. One. Yeah, yeah. It transmutes for. Yeah, exactly. It can only go find a zero mana cost card or a or a land, basically. And yeah, the, it's just tutors. Like, they're very good cards. Um, check check out the transmute mechanic for sure. I mean, it's also it's 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 great for a build around for like a, it's mm -hmm. a really good toolbox mechanic. Um, I know the one that I've had the most experience with is Dimir Houseguard, which is uh, four mana. Mm -hmm. So and, and and it's black. So you transmute that away, and four mana black. You've got damnation. You've got multiple tutor effects. Yep. Yeah. Like even you could get like Nevin Roll's disc. Uh, there are just there are so many options, and it's if you're gonna put transmute in a deck, it's definitely worth building around. Or like at least trying to like find like like make sure you have targets for your a, a, enough available options. Well, yeah, and you put like important targets. Yeah, I, I like I like what you said there because I've built a lot of decks that aren't actually built around the commander. Maybe they're built around a certain enchantment or something, you know. And I want to have as many ways to go find that enchantment as I can. And transmute can be a way to do it, you know, if the enchantment costs three or four or whatever the 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 cap the cost is. So yeah, yeah, it's another way to sort of get around the singleton nature of the format. Nice. All right. Oh, we're down to your last two here, Wedge. Oh, man. I the have suspense backups. is killing me. I have backups, too. We all have backups. But okay, good. I don't have right. backups. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know. I didn't get the memo about the backups. There's a memo. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and, anyway, I was like, there's a memo? Josh wrote the memos, um, by the way. <laughs> oh, oh, well. That's a miscommunication. <laughs> okay. Jeez. Snafu. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay, wait. I... I saw your guys' list, and they were, like, four deeper than mine. I'm like, oh, no, what did I do? Yeah, we went deeper. We, we're skipping some of ours, though, to even it out. Don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. We'll put the whole I, list, by the way, on in the comments section and the uh, the show notes so you guys can see what, what ones we didn't talk about and uh, find out for yourself. What I'm more interested in seeing is other people's lists in absolutely. the comment section because yeah. you know, I want to snipe such all their cool topic. ideas. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It'll give me more ways to change Angus McKenzie to be even more annoying. <laughs> I do not want to play against that deck. I'll play I do, against your, uh, like your mono red. Ugh. I will gladly fly out there <laughs> just to play against you with Angus McKenzie. <laughs> nice. Well, the next wow. time LA has a GP, we'll see. Wow, I don't know if we're worth the flight. I, I, I mean, I maybe I shouldn't say that, but that that's how much non fun I have playing Angus McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, next card that just uh, no one knows about is Lure of Prey, two colorless, two green instant from Mirage. 
Cast it only if an opponent casts a creature spell this turn, and you may put a green creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Woo, cheating. That's just, I, as so we know, important. a way to break the game is to cheat yeah. mana Basically, cost. yeah. yeah. Um, Terastodon. I found this card uh, from a friend of mine who plays Omnath, mm -hmm. and it's before Omnath goes absolutely crazy, and they just, you know, in case they want to play a World Spide Worm for free. Oh, jeez, they um, can just drop this guy down. Yeah, because they have just, all that huge <laughs> stuff in their deck. So yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Yep. You have that. You have decks like um, Gahiji, which just mass big creatures. Like, they just have a bunch of creatures. Jeez. I mean, the value here, you get a four-mana Progenitus. Yeah. Yeah. Can we talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, it's just, dis it's it's ridiculous. And no one will expect Lure of Prey. Yeah. Just want to let you know. No one, viewers, no one. No one. No one. It's, it's just, it, it's, it lets you cheat the game and it does it so cheap and the qualifier is so easy. Yes. Like, that's so it's, easy for somebody to cast a summon spell. Like, it's just like, okay. <laughs> yep. That's going to happen every rotation of the table. Yeah, so Lure of Prey is just criminally underused. Yeah. Criminally. And you can do it at the end of someone's end step, so it's like, all right, I pass my turn. It's like, great, you can't counter this because you're all tapped out and you've used your mana or whatever, and it's right before my turn. Here comes this thing with pseudo haste, this giant thing. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> haste, haste world spine worm. Just oh, saying. gosh, yeah. Uh, progenitus. I like well, that in idea. that case. For, yeah, Progenitus is just progenitus pretty good. The that's, nuts. that's why I play cards like Equilibrium, which uh, hopefully hoses strategies that cheat too much stuff in the play. It's an enchantment from 7th edition. Uh, it's 1 and 2 blue, so 3 total for an enchantment. Whenever you play a creature spell, you may pay 1. If you do, return target creature to its owner's hand. So this is an all-star in my Animar deck because yeah. I'm spewing out five, six creatures for way cheaper than they cost normally. Um, but this is also just great because it is bounce on the stick. Um, if you have a creature with flash, you can do this at instant speed as well. It's a great way to just really get someone. Um, also, just like if they've invested mana and enchantments onto these creatures, you can just bounce it, get rid of all that stuff, and force them to waste their turn replaying it or whatever. Yeah, it's just a free unsummon tacked onto every creature spell you play, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, not free. It's the card is free. You still have to pay one mana, but this is just value. It really is going to hose decks that are trying to play like big stuff mm -hmm. because you're spending one mana to you know to basically bounce their five or six mana thing. Very repeatable too. Yeah, it's 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 really good, um, and it's even best. It's best in the decks where you want to bounce your own stuff. You know, if you've got mold drifters and oh yeah, you know stuff right, with yeah. with ETB effects, like it's it's very very powerful. Yeah, this is a, this is a really good card. I like it. All right, Josh, what you got? Which one? Which one are you on to do? Well, I gotta I gotta narrow this down because we were only gonna do one more here. It looks like uh, Wedge is down to his last. And all. I I I have two more that I really like oh. that I can add. But but Jimmy's out. You know, I can always add a couple. <laughs> Look at you guys. <laughs> Let's okay. Two more each. Two more each. Two more each. All okay. right. All right. I can do that. Okay. Um, I'm going to do Braid of Fire. Braid of Fire is an enchantment for one or red. It has um, Wedge's favorite mechanic, which is Cumulative Upkeep. <laughs> the Cumulative Upkeep is add one red to your mana pool. That's it. What an upkeep. So what, cumu <laughs> what, what Cumulative Upkeep means is at the beginning of your upkeep, you put an age counter on the thing, and then you have to pay the cumulative upkeep for each age counter that's on it. So on your first turn, it'll give you one red mana. On your second turn, it'll give you two. On your third turn, it'll give you three. On your fourth turn, it'll give you four. Now, this sounds crazy. Um, this is from an era where there was mana burn. So it was actually like this was, if you didn't use it, your mana, it actually did damage to you uh, when you change phases. That's not no longer the case. The rules of magic don't work that way anymore. So this is just free mana during your upkeep that grows, you know, every turn. This is super powerful with Joyra or any basically anything where you have a mana sink that you can use at instant speed. Mm -hmm. This gets out of hand like super quick because by like if you get this out on turn two, by turn seven, eight, nine, you've got, you know, just a free six or seven mana to play with during your upkeep for instant speed type stuff. Um, there's just a lot of ways to break this card. I'm always surprised I haven't seen it, you know, more often. I, I've basically only seen it a, a, once or twice. Um, this card, very easily broken. T 
crazy shenanigans you can do with it. Yeah, it just you just get so much mana, and if you're a straight red strategy too, oh my gosh, you can, you can just play out the biggest things by turn five or six. Plus, you get to play a card with cumulative upkeep on it. Just for the record, they didn't know they were taking away mana burn, so this was supposed to be bad. Right, yeah, right. it's supposed to be this just, oh, no thanks, and it's well, a rare. Oh. <laughs> it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be like, you're playing with fire. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. want one mm-hmm. or two mana. It's like uh, that, that, it's like that episode of The Simpsons where they're like, Homer, do you like donuts? Yeah. Then have all the donuts in the world. <laughs> you know, and it's the same thing. You like mana? Yeah. Then have, have all, all the, the mana, mana in the world. And you know, it's supposed to like eventually burn you out and kill you, but they, they decided that mana burn was like too complicated or whatever and they took it out of the game. And so yeah. now this card is just straight good. Yep. Yeah. Like now we're in a situation where um you have cards like uh Tower of Calamities. You remember that? Yep. It's like the eight mana was it twelve yeah, it's twelve damage for eight mana to activate to have a four mana artifact. It's like stuff like that just isn't a thing. Right. But it is with that. Yep, exactly. Like it's it's just it's it's crazy what it does. It breaks it breaks all the rules. Not even just in red, but like fundamentally that card is just ridiculous. It's yeah. crazy broken. Like I'm just always surprised I haven't seen it more. All right, Wedge. Hit you got us. two left, right. man. Make them good. Yeah, make them oh, good. Oh man. All right. I'll I'll keep my surprise one for last. Oh man. Okay. Surveyor scope Ooh, is nice. two colorless artifact tap it exile it search your library for up to x basic land cards where x is the number of players who control at least two more lands than you put those cards onto the battlefield i love this card to death it's awesome yeah it is and i I, like they printed it in the 2013 commander set but i still don't see anybody playing it and I don't understand why. I've literally never seen anyone play it. I, I think it's in because my people feel like, well, if I'm too behind, then that means I'm too, uh, like, oh, no, I don't want to be that far behind everyone else. If they have lands or whatever, it's like, no, But you this, can manipulate it. You can manipulate it, it, the heck out just, of this. Yeah. It, it, it's like one of the best ways for a non-green deck to pretend it's a ramp deck. Yes. Yeah. Like, it, it is is amazing to play catch up. You can use interactions like sacrificing fetch lands yep. and then in response using the surveyor scope before you have to resolve like yep. right so that the, the number qualifies yeah or you do yeah, things it, like use uh, the bounce lands so you have the equal amount of mana in available to you but you've bounce lands back to your hand and right. play them so you actually have less actual lands i like that yep, a lot it's, oh it's so great i mean you can even there's cards like like lotus veil yep where you have to you have to sacrifice Sacri- lands but you're not down and mana because it it makes three mana so exactly and then with surveyor scope you're just you're just giving yourself you're just triggering the ability it's, oh, it's for 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 what it does and it's so cheap too colorless and then all you have to do is tap and exile yeah, it yeah. yeah doesn't even have a cost it doesn't come into play tapped either so you just play no. it and use it yep it just i i don't understand how people aren't playing this more how it's only 40 cents makes no sense to me yeah that doesn't make any sense to me either it's it's a it's a solid commander card especially if you were playing with a group that's like exploration turn one it's like great can't wait to use my surveyor scope <laughs> <laughs> like it, it 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 just lets you cheat and use all the work your opponents did to ramp to just catch them yeah right. you're just like oh you did all that you played you know two or three cards and i'm just like i'll just play this one and catch it catch up to you yeah yep it's it's so good. All right, my uh, second to last card is another all star in my Marchesa deck, but also just a good card because it does something similar to um, what uh, Braid of Fire is. It's Treasonous Ogre came out in Conspiracy, and I think people should really take another look through this set because these cards are built for multiplayer. So you're gonna find some all stars in there. Uh, Treasonous Ogre is three and a red for a two three with Dethrone. So whenever it attacks the player with the most life or tie for the most life, you put a plus one plus a counter on it. That's not what matters. It has a ability that says pay three life, add red to your mana pool. Um, and you can do, it, it doesn't cause it to tap or anything. So you yep. can do this as many times as you As many you times as you want. Now, yeah. of course, this does take a significant chunk out of your life if you're using it for like five or six red mana. But there have been so many times in the game where it's like, gosh, I wish I could cast this Insurrection right now instead of waiting three more turns because <laughs> yep. it's going to win me the game. Treasonous Ogre does that for you. And it, it, it gives you the extra mana in a pinch with a resource that you can be pretty free with um, in Commander just because you're going to have a lot of life to begin with. And hopefully you're not going to use this until a point where you're going to affect the board enough that it is going to make a big difference. I mean, a lot of times you're just like a couple of mana away from winning. Yeah. So you're like, I'll pay nine life and win. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I mean, just it couldn't be in, in flavor more for yeah. what Red is trying to do. Yeah. Like, go all in. Uh, 
These are yeah, the type. Th- this is this is a way to cheat. This is like yes. yep, and a really expensive seedling song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the type of effect. It's like channel, right? I mean, channel is yeah. one of the most powerful uh, cards in the history of Magic, and it lets you um, pay life and get that many colorless mana. But this is a sort of more fair version of channel, but it still can be broken for sure. Yeah, definitely. All right, Josh, what you got? Okay, black. Market just because I haven't shown black any oh, love gosh. here. Um, Another card that's null star in Marchesa. <laughs> yeah, this this card is very good and it's similar to uh, to Braid of Fire. It's a uh, three and two black for an enchantment. It says whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, put a charge counter on black market. At the beginning of your pre combat main phase, so your first main phase, add one black to your mana pool for each charge counter on black market. So oh, this, this is, thing just gets huge. Yeah, this scales with the game super well. Um, you know, if you play cards like Damnation and things, you can easily put like seven, eight, nine, ten counters on this, and then you're just getting ten free mana um, in, during your pre-combat main phase every turn. It's It can be way more than that, too. Um, it's pretty insane. And black has things like uh, Howl from Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to cast it pre-combat, but still, um, there's just a million ways. Drain life, you know. I've 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 seen this card used, and when it had like 20 counters on it, in in, in combination with like cabal coffers and stuff, to just mm-hmm. literally like, hey, I drain yep. life you for 40, you're dead. Oh gosh. So I mean, you could even stick all that mana into something like a diabolic revelation if you need yep. to like search for something. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So it's very very strong to just have access to a, an obscene amount of mana. I mean. The Omnath deck that you were talking about earlier, or um, the Crufix type decks, they're just built around just having obscene amounts of mana. This card can do that. Yeah, yeah. There's, it's definitely one of those cards. I think this might be the best example of a card that pre mana burn was absolutely like no one played it. Right, right it's just so dangerous. But, but now that mana burn's gone, this thing is just ridiculous. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like that's why it's like what nine dollars. Uh, more than that now. I think it's it's past ten. Jeez, like this thing is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a black very market. good. I just do not see it very often. It's yeah, me very, neither. Very good. Yeah, I have I it in two it of either. my decks, and I just I've never drawn it yet. And I'm like, come on, black market. Yeah, I know you're come in on, there. Do your thing, dude. <laughs> do your thing. Like, win more. I want to win more right now. <laughs> All right, last card: dismantling blow. Two colorless, one white, instant from invasion with a kicker cost of two colorless and one blue. And it means if something has a kicker, you can pay an additional whatever the kicker cost is as you play it. Wow. The card destroys target artifact or enchantment. And if you paid the kicker cost, the two blue and a colorless, you draw two cards. Hey. Nice. Nice. This is one of the first cards I put into Zedru. It is, it was amazing every single time I used it. I just, it, the value you get, especially, again, we talk about, you know, in the late game when you're looking for value, mm-hmm. kicker's another, much like buyback, gives you additional, like gives you value where, yeah. you know, would otherwise be useless mana. Like a, a card like Cyclonic Rift is one of the greatest cards in EDH because of its kicker cost. Yeah. Like right here, we're talking about a disenchant with a divination. Right. I mean, like for one card, that's so much value. It's, yeah. it's great for white blue decks. It's definitely, definitely overperforming. No one even uses this. And they really should. Two very useful abilities. Definitely. All right. All right, so for my final card, uh, I was going between this and another one, and I, I just put these into all my decks with blue, and every single time I played it, I have cracked the biggest smile because it's just done so much work. <laughs> it's Hercules Recall. One in the blue instant. Return all artifacts target player own, uh, owns to his or her hand. Um, this is an old card. This is like Revised Yeah, it's from Revised. Revised yeah, so it. it's only two blue. You can just blow someone out in combat. If they're like, I swing with my three guys. They have two swords attached to them, a swift foot boots, this and this and this. You're like, Hercules Recall, block, 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 block. I destroy you. <laughs> yeah, um, really awesome because uh, equipment is so prevalent in the format. Yeah. You can also do stuff like, oh, they've got a Whisper Silk Cloak on it. All Hercules Recall, and then Who you can kill, kill it. it. Yeah. yeah, someone else. Do you have a removal spell? Great, let's take care of it now. Um, Hercules Recall on your own stuff if someone's threatening to Nevermall's disc the whole board. It's just a great way. You can use it on offense and defense. It's excellent. I like this card a lot. I mean, it just it just hoses. Like, it's just one of the ultimate hosing cards. Like, it's, it's another card that doesn't necessarily need to be explained why it's so ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's right. just like, it's absolutely insane. Yeah. You'll always it, find a use for it. Um, well, and blue in particular, blue and black have trouble with artifacts. Uh, they just don't have true. a lot. Within their color pie is not a lot of ways to deal with artifacts. So mm-hmm. here you've got a card in a color uh, doing something that that color is not good at. Those are always things you, that you need. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
All right, Josh, do you have one more to, to take us out? Oh, I'm taking us out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do have one more. It is Sterling Grove. Ah. Uh. The, this card, again, it always surprises me because Enlightened Tutor, Idyllic Tutor, they just get played all the time, and I barely ever see this card. So this card is uh, a green and a white for an enchantment. It says, all other enchantments you control can't be the target of spells or abilities. So it gives... Uh, Shroud to all your enchantments. And then you can pay one and stack, sacrifice Sterling Grove. You can search your library for an enchantment card and reveal that card. Shuffle your library and then put that card on the top of it. So wow. it's an enlightened tutor minus the artifact part. Yeah. Uh, it's enchantment only. But in, and in the meantime, matter. in the meantime, it gives your enchantment shroud. And there are a lot of very powerful enchantments uh, that are, get played all the time in EDH. And this can help you go find it or can protect the ones that you've already got. This card is actually in Angus McKenzie. It was one is of it? the. Oh, nice. It was one of the first cards I added because other first cards I added were Privilege Position. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Divine Intervention to draw the game. Helix Pinnacle. Right. Like you need these enchantments to stick around. The card does an obscene amount of work. It's not expensive either. For I mean, if you look at Enlightened Tutor and the price of that compared to this, mm -hmm. it's kind of mind-boggling. I mean, it does have added benefit of being able to find uh, artifacts. Enlightened Tutor, I mean, but still, for the price differential, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, definitely an all star. All right. Well, those are our lists of overperformers. Uh, please go to the comment section, either on YouTube or Rocket Jump, and type in what you guys think are your overperformer cards that have done more work and you don't see very often, or sort of the, the hidden treasures, as we like to call them. Uh, of your deck. And uh, we'd love to see what you guys have. And we'll be doing a giveaway in conjunction with that. So if you comment on this video uh, on Rocket Jump or YouTube, you are entered to win. And we'll announce those winners, Entered of course, to on Twitter at well, as well, at CommandCast. Hey, speaking of another thing that people should enter to win. That's right. Uh, it is the final day of my Indiegogo campaign, Band-Aid. Uh, it's for a musical comedy show, a web series that I'm doing, uh, going to be filming sort of early next year and releasing hopefully around September or so. Uh, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be like Fly of the Concords or Dr. Horrible Sing Along blog. So if you like musical comedy, it's going to have a lot of cast members from VGHS as well. And we are giving away a car and a jet ski as a part of the fundraiser all a you have to car? do what wait wait a wait, car seriously and yeah a jet absolutely ski. serious for ten dollars you can yeah. get a sweepstakes entry uh and a secret little known trick uh because you're not allowed to have a quote unquote raffle it's a sweepstakes which means you do not actually have to pay to enter but i would prefer it if you did of course uh but at this point in the campaign we're almost there check out the whole page read the whole thing i bet you're going to be incentivized to donate anyway but you can also find out how to enter without paying and then you can I spend that money ski. on buying the, you know, the digital downloads of the whole season for just five bucks more. <laughs> Again, that's on Indiegogo. Look up Band-Aid. Uh, you'll find the link in the show notes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's by a lot of the people that were involved in video game high school. You know the quality is going to be high. You know they, they're going to do a really good job. Even, just the video you guys have for the for the Indiegogo campaign is like amazing. <laughs> Definitely check that out. And yeah, you can win a car. Or a jet ski. A Question. car or a jet ski? Real, real jet ski. Yes. Real jet ski, real, real car. No joke. There's no joke, uh, Wedge. Estimated value of both of them together is about $20,000. So. What? Yeah. Uh, I got them because I went on the prices right, and I kind of won the showcase showdown, and I kind of don't need... He doesn't have room for them in his Netflix mansion, so... <laughs> 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 yeah, totally. My Netflix apartment is what it should be called. Um, same thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. So please check that out. We have one day left. Um, hopefully we're in really good position, but you know we want to burst through and get past the funding level goal as much as possible. So please help us out. All the links are in the show notes below. All right, Wedge. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Can we? Um, can you hit us up again with uh, your Twitters and such? Yeah, yeah. Uh, best places to find me are just youtube.com slash themanasaurus, Twitter at themanasaurus. Pretty easy. Talk to me. We'll have virtual hugs. It'll be great. Yeah. If you guys <laughs> are listening on Reddit as well, we also all post there and put some stuff up so you'll see us lurking around those threads as well. You should definitely go check out the Mana Source. There's some really awesome stuff. And uh, check out the top 10 worst cards. Yeah, definitely. That... And let us know what you guys think of the show, too. We'd love to hear everything. Because uh, obviously, I'm a big fan. And I think you guys will be as well if you like our content on our channel. Oh, thanks. You're welcome, Wedge. <laughs> thanks for coming onto the show. 
Uh, and that will do it for this week's episode. We're moving into the Christmas holiday season. Ooh, it's getting cold and chilly. It rained in L.A. Ooh, Ooh, baby, anything cold can happen. Outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, it rained. <laughs> it, it rained. It rained yeah. outside. What's happening How over there? How cold is it there right now? Uh, it's about seventy-five, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to die a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, if Dude, you ever want to People come... are going insane here because it rained for three days in a yeah, row. Yeah, people were like It's like Stormwatch 2014. <laughs> like, here, you know Buffalo. That was two hours southwest of me. Dude, oh, my gosh, yeah. Insanity. Which got, what, seven feet or something crazy? Around there. Did like the National the Guard have buried. to come save you? <laughs> Not me. But that's, that's also because I never leave my house. So. Yeah, I was. I would imagine like, how do you go play magic in those situations? Like, I want to go to my local game store, but I can't because I have to walk through all this. You find snow. ways. Yeah. Once you've lived in it long enough, you you start burrowing. Like, it's really it, it, it's a thing. Yeah. When it rains here, people, you literally like call in sick to work. Like, it's raining. I'm not going. <laughs> anyway. Wait, seriously? Yeah. 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 It's also a danger to go out on the freeways because there are accidents like every 30 seconds. Because people the roads... don't know how to drive yeah. because it never rains here. So and you... all the oil has been building up, so now it's just like a slick warfare zone it's I've terrible i said it once i'll say it again the best thing about winter is watching it from california yeah it is nice we got prime seats prime warm seats we really like ice here yeah <laughs> now that we've basically gloated about how good the weather is here um yeah that's it's, it's, Everyone, have a nice holiday season. Wait, we're going to have more shows. What am I saying? Wait, wait, let's talk about the downside. We don't actually have seasons, so I haven't seen a, a leaf turn red in like four years. Mm, so there you go. I guess I can just it's go beautiful. Google pictures of it. <laughs> Instagram. Instead. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>